on the pole. Dale Earnhardt has a CBS race cam on board. Today. Jeff Burton, the XI Batteries Ford from Roush Race. You'll also ride with Dale Jarrett, two-time winner of this race in the Ford Credit Ford Quality Care, number 88. Mark Martin in the Valvoline Ford from Roush Racing. Mike Skinner, a former pole sitter in the Lowe's Home Improvement Chevrolet. You saw drivers with hands in the air because they have waved off the start that they anticipated this time. They'll take one more face lap. Robert Presley to Jasper Engines and Transmissions Ford. With these views, you'll also ride with the Siemens in-car camera in the Bill Davis Pontiac for Ward Burton out of South Boston, Virginia. The Hendrick Budweiser Chevrolet changes its number from 50 back to 25, and Wally Dollenbeck is the driver. And a sentimental favorite, NASCAR's most popular driver, Bill Elliott, the two-time winner of the 500, and the Super 8 Motels onboard camera riding in his Ford. And finally, Kenny Irwin Jr., last year's Rookie of the Year, the Texaco Haviland Ford, will all be carrying CBS onboard cameras today. Dave Marcus, number 71, that dark, it's not black, it's camouflage-colored Chevrolet. He ties the record for most Daytona 500 starts, 32 with Richard Petty, but all of Marcus's starts have been consecutive. He has never failed to qualify for the big dance. You're looking at Brett Favre, the honorary starter for the 500. Next time by, instead of a football, he'll have a green flag in hand. Five drivers have an added incentive here today. That's the R.J. Reynolds Winston No Bull 5 program. The first five finishers at Talladega last October have a Dayglow orange front spoiler, rear spoiler, and number on the roof. And if one of those five wins the race, it's an extra million dollars for the driver and an extra million dollars for a randomly selected fan paired up with each of those drivers. at the driver's meeting. Reggie Jackson is here. Alan Jackson, the singer, is here. Say that I'd like to have the guts and the ability to drive the way you all drive. Thank you all and good luck. Honorable Associate Justice of the U.S. Supreme Court, Clarence Thomas, convinced these drivers he's a race fan. He's got a ZR1 Corvette, likes to hot foot it. And he told us at the Grand Marshal's dinner last night, was looking at his wife when he said he'd rather go visit an engine builder's shop than an art gallery. All right, good for him. It's been a busy speed weeks here in Daytona. The Rob Dyson team, led by Butch Leisinger, with a Riley and Scott chassis and Ford engine, won the Rolex 24 hours. Mike Skinner, the Bud Shootout qualifying race. Mark Martin's first ever Daytona win came in last Sunday's Bud Shootout. Pennsylvanian Bobby Gerhardt won the ARCA 200. The Gatorade qualifying races for this 500, won by Bobby Labonte and Dale Earnhardt. Christian Elder, victorious in a crash-marred NASCAR dash race on Friday. Dale Earnhardt made a last lap pass to win the International Race of Champions event. And yesterday, the fellow they call the old man, former series champ Randy LaJoy, won the Napa 300. Congratulations to all. It has been a busy couple of weeks here at the Daytona International Speedway, and the biggest one of all coming up. As they come down for the green flag, they'll be turning this two-and-a-half-mile racetrack in about 47 seconds under race conditions today. The engines in these cars are restricted by NASCAR. The amount of air that can flow through the engines are limited. So it will take these cars more than a full lap to get up to full speed. And drivers that gain momentum on the start will be looking to move up quickly before they come to 190 miles an hour the second time by. Pontiac Grand Prix pace car dips to pit road. Jeff Gordon, youngest man to ever win the 500. And Tony Stewart, IRL champion and rookie, bring them down. Brett Favre waves the green flag, and the season is on. turn two. Normally the first couple of laps the inside groove is the place to be especially when the tires are still new they get a lot of grip down there but Tony Stewart trying to change that as he goes down the back straight buddy. He is that. Jeff Gordon fights back on the inside as we watch him go down into turn three there. Bobby Labonte in the 18 Mike is right on his heels. And here comes Earnhardt the man in black in number three looks to split the two leaders not gonna get there. 
Jeff Gordon's going to haul him off the corner to complete lap one. Bobby Labonte on the inside for second. Gordon drops down a lane right in front of Labonte to lead it. Through the tri-oval here. That's 18 degrees of banking right there. You can see the back of the car very unstable as they start off onto the flat part of the straightaway there, which is six degrees of banking. It's only the third time in the last seven years when the pole sitter has led the opening lap. And Jeff Gordon was happy to do that because he gave him five bonus points in NASCAR Michigan Cup Racing. If you lead a lap, it's five bonus points. Tony Stewart climbs the hill a little bit there. Three deep. Bobby Labonte wants to get those five bonus points. He wants to lead. Earnhardt behind Stewart. Not willing to take it three wide just on the second lap of the race. Tony Stewart is showing up a lot of muscle there on the outside. You see him still running with Gordon side by side. Bobby Labonte's loving it because that one car out there in front, he don't have to worry. As long as they run side by side, he'll keep that lead. Bobby Labonte to the front. He pairs up with Gordon on the inside lane. Tony Stewart, that orange Pontiac, leads the outside group. Ned, this looks like a 190-mile-an-hour pace lap. It certainly does. No one has been able to pull away or get an advantage. They're still running side by side for every position excepting the first one. Tony Stewart made a little bit of a rookie mistake just in the middle of that corner. He went a little bit high, but he got great momentum going down the back straightaway, and they're still side by side. Ralph Shaheen. Mike, the Joe Gibbs Racing Team knows that Tony Stewart's car is actually a little bit quicker than Bobby Labonte's machine. They want him to try to get up with Bobby since he's a rookie. They don't think too many people will want to run with him. They want him to get up to Bobby, tuck on his rear bumper, and ball him if he can. Second Daytona 500, Bobby Labonte has led in eight starts. Down to the inside, Gordon. Labonte just takes it one lane lower to hold him at bay. Jeff Burton is up for third in that Roush number 99 Ford, the purple and black machine. is Kenny Schrader. Schrader has shown a willingness to take the lane. Others won't. Now he's in the middle. As dropping down to the bottom comes one of those fast forwards. We were wondering how long it'd take Ned before they started running three by three back in that group, and it didn't take them very long. They get momentum coming off of the turn, pick up the draft, and are able to move right by. That was Dale Jarrett making the move three wide on the bottom. On the upper left of your screen on our CBS scoreboard, a driver displayed in green is one that has moved up in the last lap, and a driver displayed in red, like Kyle Petty or Ricky Craven, has lost a spot since the last time by. Tony Stewart's in trouble right now. He'll be dropping back. He's caught in the center part there where all the turbulence is on the uh, draft off these cars. You know, he'll probably lose 8, 10, maybe 15 positions. Yeah, he needs to try to get himself in line if he possibly can because running three abreast for a full lap on this racetrack normally is not good. As a rookie, the established Winston Cup drivers have not yet learned to trust Tony Stewart on this two-and-a-half-mile super speedway, so they may be a little reluctant to link up with him. But he has a fast car. Some drivers will take that chance and try to work back to the front with Stewart. But right now, he's in no man's land. Yeah, that's a recipe for a wreck right there where he's at. He has to be very, very <laughs> careful, and so do the people around him. Buddy, is he the nervous man in town right now? He's trying to find him a place, but as you can see, there's not a car that's there to pull in. So he would love to get in either lane right now. He moves up on the Kevin LePage there in the 16. Now he's back in line. He'll pick up the pace. At the front, pretty much two by two through the mid-pack. Well, till you get to Mike Skinner, and then he wanted to move down on the inside. Two cars at the front, single file. And then Ken Schrader battles with Dale Earnhardt. Boy, they've had their battles in the past, and they're pretty good friends. I, I think those are the two strongest cars after long runs is Earnhardt and Kenny Schrader. He showed a lot of muscle in every race, and he's not afraid to go up there and take a chance. Here comes, look on the outside. Here comes Dale Earnhardt. We're riding with Dale Jarrett in the Robert Yates Ford. Jarrett in sixth place on that low side. That's Kenny Schrader just in front of him. That low side is going to move up to challenge Earnhardt once again in that 3,000-foot back straightaway. It's overcast here today, and it's cool. The track is not as slick as it's been all week here. It's been very hot here at Daytona, and the setups are maybe a little bit different. Certainly the cars are a lot tighter than they would have been. Here's Earnhardt making a move. Dale Earnhardt around the outside. He's got help from Jeff Burton, Jeremy Mayfield, and Rusty Wallace. Well, I take back what I said about that inside lane being <laughs> <laughs> That wasn't until Dale Earnhardt got up on the outside. 
outside. Yeah, but he's still having a battle with Bobby Labonte. They're side by side. Well, folks, seven laps complete, and I've never seen a Daytona 500 go this long without at least a small pack trying to break away. But they are still, this is Noah's Ark at 190 miles an hour. It is nerve-wracking. Here comes Jared again down on the inside trying to make that three-wide move, and he does. He gets up from the back bumper of Jeff Gordon. And the fellow they stuck in the middle was Schrader. And look at him back up in that green and white 33. Mike, every bit of the turbulence off these cars goes right down the middle of that group. That's why they drop back when you get in the middle there. Ride with Jeff Burton. Into the trioval start-finish line. Up his inside there is Jeff Gordon. Now, you see Earnhardt pulling over towards that inside line. You get a draft off of those cars. Even You don't want to go way out wide. That's what Tony Stewart, Stewart did earlier in the race, and it cost him a lot of position. We'll talk a lot today about team racing. Watch out. Two teammates have found each other already, and their cars are similarly painted. Number 12, Jeremy Mayfield and 13, Rusty Wall, or rather, two Rusty Wallace, those white and blue Fords. They link up, and they work well together, and they'll do that all day. Let's go to Dick Bergman. Many of the teams in today's race have selected brand new race cars, such as the case with the number 24 of Jeff Gordon, who is running in second. Bobby Labonte, on the other hand, your leader, decided to run a year-old car. And why not? The car that's in the lead right now, last year won three poles, an outside pole, hit one Talladega, and it was second at both races here at Daytona in 98. To Ralph. Dick, not only that, but what is going on right now between Bobby and Dale Earnhardt is a great morale boost for that Joe Gibbs racing team. Only one time over the course of this whole week has Bobby Labonte gotten around Dale Earnhardt through all the practice, all the times that he followed him, only one time did he actually pass that three car. So for him to be able to run alongside and feel just as competitive is going to be a great morale boost. He's just got the lead back, Ralph, is now up to the high side, 99. Burton. Now they've got Earnhardt as the meat in the sandwich. Earnhardt has one chance. He has a team car, the 31, just behind him there. If they start working together, it will help Earnhardt. But right now, it looks like Mike Skinner wants to stay with Gordon. Now, will Skinner let Earnhardt in line? You're riding with Mike Skinner, Dale Earnhardt's teammate. And here he comes. Hey, he's going to pass his teammate. You're watching back from Jeff Gordon. Second place car. Looking back at that battle. Now, Burton moves over to the middle lane, trying to break the draft on Jeremy Mayfield, number 12. And Labonte and Gordon will scoot away just a bit. Earnhardt is still the hot dog between two halves of the bun. Absolutely. You hardly ever see Dale Earnhardt make that mistake, but he got in the center part. Now he has the inside lane. He'll start coming back up towards the front. Yeah, there wasn't a whole lot he could do about it. Jeff Burton just pulled on the outside and coming off the turn four, and hey, there he was. It wasn't a great deal that he could do about it. Dale Earnhardt has a great car here. So good, they've only run 49 laps of practice all week with it, plus 50 for the qualifying race and two to time trial. Otherwise, it's been in the garage, covered up. We are 11 laps into the Daytona 500. We'll be right back with you live on CBS. Daytona after 14 of 200 laps Bobby Labonte's Pontiac leads the Chevys of Jeff Gordon and Mike Skinner and the Ford of Dale Jarrett yesterday a really crash marred Napa 300 most all the drivers watched it from atop their motor coaches or trailers Dick Berger and that made for a very serious and somber drivers meeting this morning it really did Mike Joy they were very concerned and very worried and indeed this morning first thing in the garage crew chiefs were just saying I hope we don't have a repeat now we've had an awful lot of crashes here an awful lot of accidents so many that Jeff Hammond one of the crew chiefs went to David Hoots who runs the drivers meeting and he said David I don't know what you've been telling these guys but this morning change it caution free so far New ride for him, Mate Motorsports number seven. Now he feels the challenge from Earnhardt as Bobby Labonte slides up the racetrack and out of the lead. Jeff Gordon takes over the lead and Mike Skinner follows him right along. So does Dale Jarrett. Buddy, what happened to Bobby Labonte? Well, just what Dad said, if you get caught just a little bit out of position, you get a nose up under him and they're on that outside and everybody drops to the bottom. You have little to do with where 
get gapped up. They just all start going by you. Front five or single file, then it's two abreast from there on back. Three wide in turn one. Look at this. Robert Presley, 77 in the middle. Sterling Marlin, number 40. Jeff Burton, 99. And there comes the 98 car, Rick Mask, having a great run here today in the K.O. Yarborough car. A month ago, that team had disbanded. He'll put it back together. They're here. Yeah, he started 21st, and he's already up to 12th. That's a great run for Rick Mask. Back from Jeff Burton, a two-time 500 winner, Sterling Marlin, and number 40. Then Jeremy Mayfield. Presley is still in the middle. And now it's three wide, even at sixth place. Look at this. Tony Stewart is the man in the middle again. He didn't want to get back in that position, but there he is. And two rows. Yeah, three wide right behind him, Ned. So Stewart will get a little help from Robert Presley there. And Kevin LePage right in that middle. Excuse me, make that LePage rather than Stewart. Stay here all day long. 
and talk about it. We'll work together. We'll work together. We'll do this. We'll do this. Man, when there's 40 race cars out there and they get to moving around, you can't get in the line you want to get in. You can't get with a guy you want to be with. Sounds like he was telling us, telling us that right now instead of yesterday. That's the position he's in. Earnhardt has been there right at the front, but has not been able to get back up there. He's been shuffled back, but his teammate Mike Skinner is up there. 23 laps, caution free. Let's go to Dick Bergren. The toolboxes are open in Bobby Labonte's pit. He has just called in and said, I have an engine skip. He has changed his ignition system to the backup. So far, no word as to whether that's working or not. Ralph. Dick of the funnel crew down here at Roush Racing for the 99 of Jeff Burton. He has radioed back to the crew and said, now he does not think it is a tire. The car is vibrating. In fact, at one point, he even radioed in. He had some smoke inside the cockpit of the car. But they keep asking him questions. Do you think it's a shock? Do you think it's in the engine? And he just can't figure it out yet. That's like calling your doctor on the phone and asking, what's wrong with me? All he can do is have the input he gets from you and guess. Look at this, three abreast, and Jeff Gordon is the man in the middle between Mark Martin and the 16 of Kevin LePage. He finds a place in line, and they are still two by two all the way back through the field of the Daytona 500. 24 laps complete. Mike Skinner leads Bobby Labonte. Square shaped facilities, the Daytona Club, a one and a half acre tent that's played host to thousands of guests during speed weeks. It has several themed sections, including Italian, Mexican, and continental dining. That overhead shot, courtesy of the Goodyear Blimp Stars and Stripes, based in Pompano Beach, Florida. Captain Dan Thomas from Endeavor, Wisconsin, at the controls today. 28 laps into the Great American Race, and Mike Skinner, former pole sitter, has been pulling this 40-car train. Bobby Labonte's Pontiac in second, Dale Jarrett's Ford in third, Rusty Wallace in a Ford, number two in fourth. Tony Stewart, there's the outside pole sitter, the rookie in that orange Pontiac, number 20. And Jeremy Mayfield, the number 12 Ford, they've gained a little distance on the field. Stewart has worked his way back. He had dropped back to about 12th place when he got in the middle there a while back, but has been able to work his way back up there now in single file, running along there in 6th, 5th place. Mike, when we were in the garage area just a little while back, we were told that Tony Stewart and Jeremy Mayfield hooked up in practice. They found a combination. They're going to work together. And for the Richard Petty and John Andretti fans, the STP Pontiac is being pushed behind the wall. Apparently something went wrong with the engine. Ken Squire. Yeah, that's a tough one for them. They've had some motor problems. They got caught in the 125 in the first lap incident. Number 43 came out for this race, sporting all petty blue for the first time since 1971. Thought it might change their life. Back to when Andy Granatelli first joined the group and put one sticker on the car, but apparently luck wasn't a factor today. Engine trouble, they're now showing four laps down. Looks like their day may be over. Those Petty Blue cars have won nine Daytona 500s. Richard Petty won seven. Lee Petty won the first one. Pete Hamilton in 1970 won it in number 40 Petty Blue Plymouth Superbird. How about Mike Skinner, first champion of the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series? Up for his second try at Winston Cup Racing in his career, the Susanville, California driver. His teammate to Dale Earnhardt for Richard Childress Racing. You know, he's never won a points race in a Western Cup car, but he has won twice in Japan in, in this particular type car, so uh, he knows how to drive, and he has a great crew chief, and I think right now, you know, the same guy that set up Earnhardt's car last year set that car for the 500 here. That would be Larry McReynolds, a member of the Alabama Peach Fuzz Gang that included Davey Allison, came out of the Birmingham short track and rose to prominence here in Winston Cup. There are 13 cars now, Mike. You can see that train right there coming by that have pulled away. You see the distance back there to that second group. Ken Schrader hits them up in 12th place, but that front group up there running single file are beginning to pull away. Well, as long as this group, Ned, runs double file, the law of the draft proves that a single file group of cars will be faster than cars racing side by side. That's why this group can pull away. Here's Ralph. Larry 
Jones is the crew chief for Mike Skinner. And Larry, you're the man, the crew chief, Dale Earnhardt, to his first Daytona 500 victory. Do you have Mike on the same strategy that you ran with Dale yesterday or last year? Well, you know, we're just we're trying to just stay out front. You know, we watched the Bush race yesterday. Obviously, that's the best place to be, the way things have been going all week. But we just want to be smart. We want to be at the end of this thing, be in position, and hopefully not get shuffled. Like I told the guys this morning, whatever happens this Lowe's team, I'm proud to be with this group. It's, uh, it's an awesome race team. They're ready to win some races. A little cooler out here today. Has it affected your setups? Yeah, you know, we was able to put a little tape on the front end. The biggest burden was on the engine tuner this morning. You know, figure about every 8 or 10 degrees, you got to add some jet to these things. So he, he's the one that had the most sleepless night last night. And, of course, Mike, that will affect their fuel mileage. Cold air can make more horsepower, but it needs a carburetor adjustment to do so. There's John Andretti in Richard Petty's car being pushed back to the garage. 32 laps complete. Out front is Mike Skinner's Chevy, Bobby Labonte's Pontiac, Dale Jarrett's Ford. Boy, Tony Stewart caught on the outside again. He drifted high a little bit. Of course, they can't wait on him. Even if you're working with somebody, you have to go when the chance comes. You see Earnhardt going by, Sterling Marlin, all these guys will bypass him because he's on that outside by himself. Stewart just got, as they say in NASCAR parlance, hung out to drive or clothesline. He got out of the line and everybody else went. Best thing he can do right now is fall in behind that six car, Mark Martin, and just follow them along, grab the along, because that second group would catch up with them if they start racing side by side. And folks, it's not that he doesn't have the power. That's one of the fastest cars here. But when the lead car in that group is pushing the wind aside, the best place you can be is right behind it. Dick Bergman. Well, it may be tough to find a mechanic on a Sunday afternoon for folks home watching television, but if you happen to be running well in the Daytona 500 as Bobby Labonte is, it's pretty easy to find one. His crew, however, has been worrying and talking over where that skip is from. They think it's possibly a loose wire because it's intermittent. It comes and goes. Meanwhile, Dale Jarrett in the 88 car has a bit of a heating problem. His water has gotten up to 220 degrees, oil to 230. That's not good. They told him, turn the fan on, cool that engine down. You ride with Dale Jarrett behind Bobby Labonte's Pontiac. Bill Stevens. I'm with John Andretti. John, there was a report smoke from the car. What happened? I'm not sure. We got um, a problem in the motor department, I guess. Um, car ran fine. I was just uh, waiting for it to thin out a little bit so we could get moving forward with our with the STP car. But unfortunately, um, it wasn't our day. So um, try and get the petty blue car in victory lane sometime this year. Second year in a row, tough break for the 43 car. John Andretti won here, 4th of July, 1997, driving for Cale Yarborough. A Pontiac, a Chevy, and a Ford lead the Daytona 500. Those are the three competing makes. But it's two Fords lined up behind that third-place car of Dale Jarrett. Let's see if they can make a move when we come back to the Daytona 500. 34 laps complete. Mike Skinner leads Bobby Labonte and Dale Jarrett. Courage. Something shared by countless Americans. Those who risked their lives. Those who battled serious illness. When I was diagnosed with prostate cancer, I was primarily concerned with ridding myself of the cancer. But secondly, I was concerned about possible post-operative side effects like erectile dysfunction, ED, often called impotence. You know, it's a little embarrassing to talk about ED, but it's so important to millions of men and their partners that I decided to talk about it publicly. And after all, it can be associated with many conditions, including prostate surgery, high blood pressure, diabetes, or even smoking. And the point I want to make is there are many treatments available for ED, so my advice is get a medical checkup. It's the best way to get educated about ED and what can be done to treat it. It may take a little courage, but I've always found that everything worthwhile does. Get ready. They're here. The most precious metals are about to arrive. Stand back, boys. Introducing Racing Champions Precious Metal Series Limited Edition Collectible Diecast. In gold. In 24 karat gold. And platinum. NASCAR collectibles so unique they could only be called precious metals. Better get your hands on them before we get them all. Racing Champions Precious Metals and Originals. There's a new series to collect every month. Available at your favorite retailer. 
There are many ways you can get stuck with a flat tire. But not with this tire. Even with no air pressure, you keep driving to safety. The Goodyear Aquasteel Run Flat. It could be the difference between getting stuck and getting there. Only from Goodyear. This CBS Sports Race Summary is sponsored by Goodyear, innovators of run-flat technology. Greg Gumbel back at Daytona after 36 laps. We have had three different leaders and three different lead changes. The speed is up there, 187 miles an hour plus. No caution flags as yet, and the war of attrition that was the Napa Auto Parts 300 yesterday has not been nearly so brutal today. Only John Andretti with a bad engine is out on lap 25, but the day is young. Mike Joy. Thanks, Greg. Buddy Baker, your record of the fastest 500 ever may be in jeopardy. Mike Skinner's crew looking on. They want to see how that car is running. Every team has TV sets in their pit and satellite dishes. We're 39 laps into the Daytona 500. Mike Joy with Buddy Baker and Ned Jarrett. There to the inside comes one of those Penske Kranifus cars. Jeremy Mayfield, number 12, with his teammate Rusty Wallace. Yeah, they're working very well together, but just a second ago, you see your second place car there, Dale Jarrett? He went by four cars on the back straightaway, no help whatsoever. He's got a lot of muscle. Three wide, sixth place. Something here has got to give. 24 is Gordon, two is Wallace, six is Mark Martin. I don't think anybody's told the drivers that. They're still three wide as they head off into turn one. Rusty says, I don't want to be here. That's the car number two right here. How about that 22, that black and yellow machine of Ward Burton? He's right up into the lead pack. He's been as high as fifth today for Bill and Gail Davis. Yeah, he started 18th. And you're on board his car with our Siemens race cam. Looking up at Mike Skinner, you see Jeremy Mayfield in the 12 going under him there, and his teammate Rusty Wallace right in tow. Where you see one of them today, you'll see the other, Wallace and Mayfield, running as teammates and seeking each other out on the racetrack. Bobby Labonte's Pontiac, the green car, hauling up red and white Ford of Dale Jarrett, two-time winner of the 500. Skinner looks inside, lines back up on Jarrett, looks outside. Single file once again through the top half dozen. Kenny Irwin is in that pack. He started 41st. He's up to 15. He had a fast car yesterday in practice, Kenny Irwin. He didn't have a good qualifying run, but they certainly got that forward worked out good. And he is coming towards the front. He's climbing the ladder. That's uh, Irwin, number 28. And he has caught that second pack. And alongside the 97 of Chad Little, trying to work his way up through. Yeah, that 13-car breakaway that we had has changed. Here comes Jerry for the lead at the line. Boy, and he's got everybody behind him. When you make a pass like he made a while ago right by yourself, everybody goes, whoa, wait a minute. Maybe we ought to get with him and go. And Bobby Labonte looks in his rearview mirror and sees the next worst thing after Dale Earnhardt, which is nobody. Back he goes. Let's go on board with Mike Skinner and our Circuit City onboard telemetry. Well, he's turning about 6,700 down the back straightaway, about 190 miles an hour down, going into turn three. You can see the cars moving up and down. This racetrack is a little bit bumpy. All turn four, down the little short chute here, and you'll see the car rock over to the left. That's through the trial here. Start finishing line right there. Now another little short chute, heading in turn one. They'll run right along the wall and then just dive right down to the white line on the bottom. You can see the car kind of wiggling right there. It's bumpy right there. You see it jump again. Now he's coming off towards the back straightaway. He'll go out against the wall. And that's what it's like to go around Daytona with a fast car. Now, for you mechanical buffs out there, you see that RPM there, a little less than 7,000 RPMs, and you say, well, I thought these Winston Cup cars turned 8,500, 9,000. They do on all the tracks except from the restrictor plate tracks, but not where the engines are restricted, and Ricky Craven, an unscheduled pit stop here in car number 58. 
bad vibration for Craven. He is in about, oh, 15 laps before he would like to make a pit stop. This will cost him one lap to the field and take him out of sequence. Dale Jarrett is your leader. It's the first time a Ford has led today, and no Ford led a lap in the qualifying races on Thursday. We're 44 laps into the Daytona 500, caution-free thus far. CBS Sports coverage continues after this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports presentation of the Daytona 500 is sponsored by Brewery Fresh Budweiser, official beer of NASCAR. Hey, race fans, this Bud's for you. AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. And by Ford, the official truck of NASCAR is built Ford Tough. 47 laps completed, Daytona. Dale Jarrett's Ford leads the Chevy of Mike Skinner and the Ford of Jeremy Mayfield. 1990 Daytona 500 champion Derek Cope just made an early pit stop. He had cut a right front tire, came in to get his right sides changed. So he and Ricky Craven are out of the pit stop sequence. We expect regular green flag laps beginning in about eight laps or so. Green flag pit stops coming yes. up here before too long. Ned appeared to have lost the handle. 23, Jimmy Spencer was up in that lead pack. Now he's drifted back into this pack and continues to run high on the racetrack. I don't think Hamill had a lot to do with it. I think when that 88 car got in her lead up there, he pulled them away from that second group. Kenny Wallace in his first drive for Andy Petrie racing through Chief Jimmy Ellich. His team going to work. This is a little early for scheduled pit stops. Because of the 55 mile an hour speed limit on pit road, under the green flag, if teams take a pit stop, they will lose one lap to the leaders. Even if they make a 17 second pit stop and it takes 47 or 48 seconds to go around here, your slow down speed and getting back up to speed really costs you a lot of time. We have been under the green flag since we started the Daytona 500. Buddy Baker's record for the fastest 500 ever at 177 miles an hour may be in jeopardy. <laughs> Here's your top five. Dale Jarrett in a Ford, Mike Skinner's Chevy, Jeremy Mayfield and Rusty Wallace in Fords, Jeff Gordon, number 24. There's Warren Burton in 22. That's a Pontiac in sixth. Mark Martin is seventh. Michael Waltrip, Ernie Urban. That pack back through eighth and ninth place. Number three, Dale Earnhardt in tenth. Kenny Irwin in 11th. Robert Presley, Chad Little, Bobby Labonte is back to 14th place. There's Labonte's car on the right side of your screen, that green and black number 18. He's racing with Chad Little. Then it's Bobby Hamilton, Kenny Schrader, and Jimmy Spencer. Sterling Marlin, Wally Dahlenbeck, and Terry Labonte complete the top 20. There are 36 cars still running on the lead lap. Mike, you're exactly right. We're looking at Jimmy Spencer there at 23. He got his high third place, but he's dropping back right now. I think when he gets tired, his car is not sticking just the way he wants it to. Wisconsin driver Rich Bickle makes a pit stop, and so does the number 90 of Mike Wallace, who replaced rookie Mike Harmon for Judy Dunleavy in midweek here. Riding with Kenny Irwin. What a climb he's had. Last year's Rookie of the Year started 41st, and Irwin is up to 11th place. And I'm noting Jeff Gordon here. Looks like he's dropped off of the lead pack there just a little bit. He's not totally out of the draft yet. But see, he has dropped back about five or six car lengths. There's Gordon. And you see the front four there beginning to pull away a little bit from him. I just wonder, maybe the, by it being cool, if they didn't put a little too much tape on some of these cars and we're getting water temperature built up or something. Well, buddy, they also had been concerned about tire wear. This track is, it's been a while since it's been paved and it's getting abrasive. And the cooler weather today would help to increase the tire wear because it, the track wouldn't be quite as slick. You'd think that it, if it's slick, they'd slide around more and grind off more rubber. But if they get traction, that's when you wear off the rubber. And, and maybe he's a little bit concerned about that, or maybe the tires are wearing down a little bit for him. You saw cars battling to stay on the lead lap. Joe Nemechek, rookie Elliott Sadler, and Brett Bodine. Riding with Jeff Gordon, looking ahead at that lead pack of four cars. Jarrett, Skinner, Mayfield, and Wallace. Jeff Burton comes on to pit row. Frank Stoddard from New Hampshire, the crew chief. We'll get a chance to look and see what problems befell the number 99 of Burton, who dropped from the lead pack to the backpack. Ralph? Jack, 
man Chuck White goes over to get to the right side of the car to get it up in the air. It should take just one push down on that jack to get the car up in the air. They go to work. Remember, they've had this vibration. They're trying to figure out where it's from. Problem with the right front. Crew Chief Frank Stoddard is also the front tire changer. Slow getting around to the left side now. They get those tires off and on. A little bit smoother on this side. A problem with the left front as well. Now he's down and away. And stole the car, fires it back up, and away he goes. Dave Marcus coasting in, getting tires. Car weaved a bit coming in. Might have had a tire cut down. Might have had trouble with fuel pickup. And Bill Elliott hitting right behind him. And Johnny Benson, Jerry Nadu. These are all scheduled green flag pit stops coming at lap 53. Dick Bergman. Dale yeah, Earnhardt's crew member Bobby Hutchins has just been down to Bobby Labonte's pit and asked if they could pit together. They have agreed to do exactly that. Earnhardt fighting a push with his race car. He is not at all happy with the handling in that automobile. Jarrett is going to come in and try to change his handling just a little bit as well. His temperature has stabilized. Teammates Mayfield and Rusty Wallace peel off the track together as expected to make stops. Here comes Wally Dollenbach, Bobby Hamilton, Terry Labonte, and outside bull sitter Tony Stewart. Bill? Wallace and Mayfield into the pits just a moment ago. The crew chief for Jeremy Mayfield, Paul Andrews, got together with Robin Pemberton, the crew chief for Rusty Wallace, and said, watch the tires when you take them off the cars. Yesterday, some incidents of the Bush race cost a couple of drivers some positions. They're just taking on four tires, full load of fuel, and no other adjustments, and nose to tail, they want to get them out. Mayfield slightly slower to Nick Berkman. Tony Stewart is just leaving the pit, and that is a brand new team. That is the very first pit stop that they have ever executed and they did a good job. 19.41, four tires, two cans of fuel. They did it right, Mike. Jeffrey Bodine has been in. Also the 75 of Ted Musgrave. The leader, Dale Jarrett, will pit in two laps. Tony Stewart coming back out. Going to take a lap or so to build speed to get back up to speed and merge with traffic. Daryl Waltrip, Ernie Irvin is in. The 98 is in. That's Rick Mask, Steve Park, Ricky Rudd, rookie Elliott Sadler, and Brett Bodine all making pit stops. We expected stops in the lap 55 to 60 range, and that's just about where they're coming. There's a look at Rick Mast, Ernie Irvin with that brand new paint job. It's a favorite of all the kids. His helmet looks just like the race car. Here's Kyle Petty going out of the pits after getting his service. Leaders come by one more time in that front pack. Following Dale Jarrett is 31, Mike Skinner. There's Ricky Rutt, the orange number 10, and Steve Park completing service. Brett Bodine's white car in Park, whose rookie season cut short by a bad crash in Atlanta, but he's back healthy, ready to race. This time around, we should see the leaders. Number 88, Jarrett, the Ford. Now there's Rusty Wallace running right behind him. He has made his pit stop, but he is one lap down. But he might be the leader after all of these pit stops are completed because he made a good pit stop. And here we do see Jarrett and Skinner coming into the pits. They had a good move for them to pit together since they were running together? Yeah, I think so, because they drafted together well. Gordon is coming in, a lot of other cars coming in as well. They drafted together well at Talladega last October, and they're racing down pit road there. Jared to get to his pits first. The hope of all these cars is they can get out of the pits with the drivers that were leading and draft along with them. Jeff Gordon's in, Mark Martin's in, here's Ralph. Mike Skinner's crew goes to work on the car. They'll take four tires of fuel. They're not going to make any changes on this car. Work completed on the right side. They go to work as the first can of fuel comes flying over the wall. Tires are off and on. Just in front of him, Robert Presley's crew completes his work. A great stop for Skinner. He wanted a pit with Jared. He'll go right back out with him. Jeff Gordon leaves as well. They did change air pressures there to Bill Stevens. Dale Earnhardt finishes his pit stop. He took four tires and a load of fuel and is back out again. About a 21-second pit stop for the number three car. The drivers that stopped in this sequence include Earnhardt pulling away now. Let's go back to Dick Bergman. Dale Jarrett had a great pit stop. He just ripped off a 16.65. Other than putting four tires, two cans of gas in it, they changed a 
tire pressure one pound. And that, believe it or not, will make that car run better. Mike? Drivers have stopped on this lap include Earnhardt, number three, Jimmy Spencer, Dale Jarrett, Bobby Labonte came in. So did the 77 of Robert Presley, Sterling Marlin, Ward Burton, Kenny Irwin, and the 16 of Kevin LePage. So did Michael Waltrip. They all stopped on the same lap. Now here's Rusty Wallace getting around Dale Jarrett. We said that Rusty Wallace would probably be the leader after this round of pit stops. Sure enough, he is. Even though Jarrett might have made a half a second faster pit stop than he did, Rusty got in and out the pits good, got back out there, ran two or three laps on those uh, fresh tires, allowed him to run a little bit faster than he'd been running on the old tires, and so that's put him in the lead. Let's reset the order for you after pit stops. There is your leader, Rusty Wallace, who is trying to win the Daytona 500 for his first time. Dale Jarrett is second. Mike Skinner is third, Jeremy Mayfield fourth, Jeff Gordon's fifth, Kenny Schrader sixth, seventh is Mark Martin, eighth, good stop for Bill Elliott, ninth is Chad Little, tenth, the rookie, Tony Stewart, eleventh is Bobby Labonte, twelfth, Bobby Hamilton, then it's Ernie Irvin, Terry Labonte, Kenny Irwin, Michael Walter, Robert Presley, Kyle Petty, Wally Dollaback, and Dale Earnhardt, the top 20. Third and fourth, better get in gear because those are two light and fast right there. Mike Skinner and Jeremy Mayfield are coming around Derek Cope right now, trying to get in that lead draft. If those two cars get hooked up and they happen to get away into some lap traffic, they're in trouble. Here's the battle for third place. You see number 12, Jeremy Mayfield, battling along with Derek Cope. And that really hurt Cope. He got a little bit loose coming off of that corner there, had to back off momentarily and see he has almost lost the draft of Skinner as Skinner tries to catch up to that twosome up front of Rusty Wallace and Dale Jerry. Cope is one of two drivers that did not catch back up onto the lead lap with pit stops. The other is Dave Marcus. Watch number four, Bobby Hamilton on the inside of Tony Stewart. And here's your pit summary showing the total time on pit road. That's where you see the tenths of a second really count. Dale Jarrett was the quickest of those, and he's now back up at the front with Rusty Wallace. And you saw that Jeff Gordon took a little bit longer on pit road. He is now four and three quarters of a second behind the leader, Rusty Wallace. 60 laps into the Daytona 500, running at a record pace, caution free. We'll be right back. Today's race get a complete wrap up with the latest news from the track plus audio interviews and more at cbs.sportsline.com or log on to America Online and go to keyword CBS Sportsline. Yesterday at Torrey Pines, Tiger Woods blistered the course. The Buick Invitational is coming up next. And Tiger with a 62 yesterday, now is 15 under par with the lead. Billy Ray Brown is one stroke back with three tied, two strokes off the lead. That's coming up later today on CBS Sports. 64 laps, Rusty Wallace is the leader, and NASCAR's most popular driver, Bill Elliott. As you watch from our Super 8 roof cam, Elliott has climbed to 8th place. He started 37th today. A little further back, Terry Labonte leads a pack around. Labonte is the 11th place car, number 5. Strong shot to win today. Ned, with your watch up here, he's clocking all these cars. Who's the quickest car out there? Jeff Gordon is the quickest car right now. We said a moment ago that he was four and three quarter seconds behind the leader, Rusty Wallace. Now he has cut it down to three and three tenths of a second. So he's definitely gaining on it. Average speed thus far, 184 and a half miles an hour. No Daytona 500 has been run caution free since 1962. Last year, we had a shot at it. Didn't see the first yellow flag to lap 126 of 200. There's Gordon. Look at that graphic, Ned. He's more than a mile an hour faster than the race leader, and he's pulling Kenny Schrader in 33, and Mark Martin's number six right along with him. He's chasing this pack. Yes, he's pulling a long string of cars back there. Jeremy Mayfield dropped out of that front group, and you see that right now Jeff Gordon and him are getting a little bit of uh, toe from him because he's in between the two packs. That'll help them catch that much quicker. 
three-car breakaway, then Mayfield all by himself, and then this train of 11 cars trying to run them down. Ralph Shaheen. Mike, this is what a brand new Goodyear Eagle racing tire looks like that they're utilizing here today. Here's the set that just came off Mike Skinner's car. Now, the one that's under the tarp back here that all the Goodyear officials are looking at with Mike Skinner's crew is coming apart right here in the middle of the tire. Larry McReynolds, a crew chief, thinks it didn't happen until when he slid to a stop because he didn't complain of any problems. They're going to have Goodyear take a look at that tire. Dick? And I'm down in Bobby Labonte's pit. We've had Goodyear people down here as well. Phil Homer said he thinks that the only problem is that with the colder temperatures that some of the crews have taken what he called a very aggressive suspension setup. To Bill Stevens. Well, the McDonald's drive through crew for Bill Elliott has certainly had a busy week. They have had not one, not two, not three, but 11 engines in that car at one time or another. Ernie Elliott keeps building them. They keep changing them. They're happy with the one that's in there now, and they only made a two-tire stop in that last pit stop to maintain track position. Let's update you on two drivers that were in the top 10 before pit stops but are no longer. Dale Earnhardt has dropped to 20th position. Jimmy Spencer has dropped out of that lead group to 24th. Mike, coming off turn four there, Jeff Gordon, you can see he's run Jeremy Mayfield down just in front of them. That's the first three positions up there. They'll catch this bunch in a hurry. They have the draft off the front bunch, and now Jeremy Mayfield, one of the fastest cars out there, has some help. Gordon Chevrolet lined up on Mayfield's board. Mayfield has lost his teammate, Rusty Wallace, who is up leading this race right here with Dale Jarrett and Mike Skinner. Now look at the interval from this group of three. It's about a dozen 15 car lengths to the next pack, but this train is coming. It is coming. It's coming much faster than those front three are running. Uh, Rusty Wallace, his lap times now are about 47.90 to 48 seconds flat. When Dale Jarrett was leading before they made the pit stop, he was running about 47.60 to 47.70. So they're running about three-tenths of a second slower than they were at that time. But you know, judgments might have made the, the difference. Bill Elliott drops to the back of this pack behind Bobby Hamilton. Rusty Wallace told me this morning after the driver's meeting, I've got a great car here. Look at that sandwich trapper up there on that hood pin. You think it didn't get to work out? When he went through the drive through, they just uh, left the little sandwich wrapper there. Uh, Look yeah. at this. This is what I'm talking about right there. That thing's really getting a workout. That's uh, that's a hot dog wrapper at 200 miles an hour. It's amazing that it stays on that long. Well, you said goodbye. <laughs> Bobby Labonte just ahead of Bill Elliott. Let's go to Ken Squire. This is the 17th try for Rusty Wallace to win the 500. He came here in 1984 in the 125 mile qualifier. He went side over side a dozen times off turn two. It was replicated in 1993. Many have felt that Wallace was gun shy about this track, but he certainly doesn't look gun shy today, Mike. No, Ken, he's led 13 laps today. In his previous 16 appearances of the Daytona 500, he had led only a total of 11 laps. So Wallace, he does have a strong horse today. Mike, what we were talking about, look at this. Yes, he is very strong, but look at this part. They have run him down from way back. They were two, 300 yards back, just a couple of laps back. Now it's a big train again. And now they don't want to ride in line. That group wants to race. They want to race. They want to get up there and lead this Daytona 500. Here comes Mayfield. He's trying to make a run on Jerry, but no room there. Where that white line is at the bottom of the racetrack, it goes from 18 degrees to flat here in the trioval and 31 degrees to flat up here in the banking at the west side of the speedway. Do not dip your tires below that white line. I'm watching Jeremy Mayfield in the 12 there. He's looking on the inside of Dale Jarrett down the front straightaway. He knows he has some help with Jeff Gordon if he can come with him. He's got to get back up in line, though, before the banking and does so single file. Number two on the left side of your screen is the leader, Rusty Wallace. 88, Dale Jarrett. Number 12, Jeremy Mayfield. 24, Jeff Gordon. 33, Kenny Schrader right back in it with a six of Mark Martin. We are 71 laps into the 41st Daytona 500 live on CBS. We'll be right back. Tuesday on CBS, the militia accuses a Navy SEAL of murder. Is it an act of vengeance or an act of war? Montel Williams guest stars in an all-new JAG, Tuesday on CBS. 
This great overhead coverage from 1,000 feet above Daytona International Speedway from the Goodyear Blitz Stars and Stripes, a continuing tradition that began in 1960 here on CBS at the Orange Bowl. 75 laps complete. As you watch from the Goodyear blimp, Rusty Wallace leads Jarrett and Mayfield, three Fords at the front. And we have a six-car pullaway right now. Mike, I mentioned a little bit earlier that when Dale Jarrett was leading earlier that he was running like 47, 60. Once Jeff Gordon and these other cars caught up to them, they, Rusty Wallace has picked up the pace, so I think the six cars can run faster than three cars because he's running 47, 50 to 47, 60 now in, in uh, lap times. Buddy, is that a surprise? Yeah, it, it, no, not really, because the longer the train, the less turbulence you have in between cars. So the longer the train you have, the quicker that lead car can break through the air. Dale Earnhardt has drifted way back in this race. He is the 20th place car after starting fourth and winning his qualifying race on Thursday. Here's Ken Squire. Keep your eye on the Pontiac number 36 of Ernie Irvin, who started 31st today. And recall that this is his first time back since that serious crash at Talladega, Alabama, where he reactivated some of those injuries sustained back in 94 in Michigan. And right now, Ernie Irvin has pulled himself up into the eighth position. He's having a ride, Michael. And that Pontiac, that yellow Pontiac, is a quick one, Ken. And Irvin feels he can do it today. You know, you were just talking about Earnhardt. He's almost a half a lap down right now to the leaders. You're right, buddy. He's 17 seconds behind the lead car. You're watching for Mike Skinner. Skinner is now the seventh place car in that Richard Childress Chevrolet. Looking back at Ernie Irvin. Dick Bergman, what's wrong with Dale Earnhardt? Well, how about if we asked his crew chief? We're so used to seeing you guys in the lead, seeing you way back is so strange. What's wrong? Well, we had a little miscue on that pit stop, and we lost the pack of cars we were running with. Uh, we desperately need a caution right now so we can catch it back up. Yeah, he kind of got running by himself and just got stuck in the back. They say the car's okay. To Ralph. Where was crew chief Robin Pemberton for Rusty Wallace? Robin, you seem to run better with the bigger pack of cars. Is it better for the car to have six behind you like that? Yeah, it, it takes about, it takes a good four or five cars to get a good draft. You know, when it was just the three of them up front, they're about 47, 80s or 90s, and now they're 50s or 60s. So you three cars don't cut it. You got to have at least four. To Bill Stevens. Kenny Schrader having a great run, but you wouldn't have believed it if you saw the speeds he was running in happy hour yesterday. He was at the bottom of the page. The reason? Well, they didn't stay out too long. A little apprehension with this team. Crew Chief Sammy Johns told me discretion the better part of valor. They wanted to park that car. It was running so well, they didn't want to risk having an accident in that last practice. A car that is wrecked in practice, and the team has to go to a backup car, they have to go to the back of the starting grid. That's the reason there. If there was an incident on track that required the use of a caution flag and to slow the field behind the pace car, that would allow those cars that are running well behind the leaders to catch up in that line when they slow under caution. That's what Earnhardt is looking for to try to get back with a pack to draft with. Back up front. Right now, Earnhardt is running 18 seconds behind the leader. That's uh, not quite a half a lap, but it's a long way. Rusty Wallace, 0 for 16 of the Daytona 500. He has taken some wild tumbles here. Set a goal two years ago to just finish this race and did. And has worked his way up into contention both last year and this to win the 500. His 17th try to win the great race. Mike, at the end of this line right here is a very, very cagey driver, and he won his first race ever at Daytona this past week. Mark Martin's just sitting there in that six car, riding along in that front draft, and this is the best effort he's ever had at Daytona. What this lead pack is trying to do right now is draft away from the rest of the field. That's why you're not seeing them passing. Each of these drivers is a proven commodity. They are all past Winston Cup race winners, and they know that to put themselves and keep themselves in a position to win by staying in that front pack amongst proven drivers that they can trust at 190 miles an hour is their best chance to be up front at the end of the day. And certainly the, the least number that you can have up there, the better chances you have at the end, even though that six-car pack is running some of the better laps that we've seen here today, they would like to get all the way from the others. One driver moving up is Wally Dahlenbach. He's new with Rick Hendrick Motorsports as a full-time driver this year, as you watch from our Budweiser camp. Now, if Louie and Frank were stuck to that hood pin, <laughs> nah, let's not go there. 
I didn't know that Falk could talk till I saw our last commercial. Wally's moving up. He started 34th, and now he's running in 19th place. The former SCCA Road Racing Trans Am champion pulling alongside Derek Cope and running right behind Kyle Petty. Kyle had a big grin on his face. He was a cameraman yesterday down in the pits. His son, Adam, a fourth-generation Petty racing here at Daytona. And Kyle was a proud dad. He was snapping pictures of everything. Boy, what a talent, too. I mean, he drove the wheels off that car all day long. Finished in the top ten, sixth, I think it was. Just a great day for him. Now, that lead draft may get a little longer. Once again, the second pack is closing in on the six front runners. Exactly. The minute they quit trying to pass each other back there, they started closing back in on that front group. Side by side, don't get it if you're trying to catch them. Mike Skinner is the guy who is pulling that second pack. He has a very fast race car. We saw him leave this race for a while, a little bit earlier. And he hasn't lost any of that speed. He just got shuffled out of the draft there. But there's some racing going on back there in that pack. Bill Elliott is up high. That's the number 94. And Chad Little, 97, as they race. Teammates Bobby Labonte and Tony Stewart, the green and orange Pontiac. And a brother just in front of you up there, the number five, Terry Labonte, pulling Bobby Labonte and teammate there, as you said. That battle is for 10th place. There is Kenny Irwin. That black and orange, number 28, from Robert Yates Racing, teammate to Dale Jarrett, the former USAC Open Wheel champion, last year's Rookie of the Year on the Winston Cup circuit. Here's Bill Stevens. Kenny Irwin has sliced through the field from 41st up to 10th. I just spoke to his crew chief, Doug Richard, and I said, what's Kenny saying to you? He says, he's not saying much. Doing that well, you don't say anything. <laughs> Good ride for Irwin. Not much for the fans in the stands with those programmable scatters to listen to on that channel. Kenny feels that he has something to prove this year. His rookie year last year was not what he expected. That number 28 car is a very high-profile car, and maybe he put too much pressure on himself. Maybe other people expected too much of him, because it's tough for a rookie to come in this series, regardless of how good of a race car you got, and win week in and week out. And he wants to show people that he can drive one of these things, and he can. He's a very good talent. Ned, he had very little full-fendered race car experience before he came to Winston Cup. He spent a year in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series, did very well there, but everything else that he had driven had been open-wheel, lightweight race cars. He had a good run in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series for a year and then moved into Winston Cup, and boy, that was a big jump. 84 laps are complete. We're closing in on halfway as you ride with Robert Presley chasing Michael Waltrip in the 41st Annual Daytona 500. We'll be right back. Tonight on CBS, how difficult is it for criminals to buy guns? Let some undercover cops show you how easy it is tonight on 60 Minutes. Then Olympic gold medalist Tara Lipinski guest stars on an all-new Touched by an Angel, followed by an emotional story inspired by true events. A woman's search for her true mother. ER's Gloria Rubin and Ann Bancroft star in the CBS Sunday movie, Deep in My Heart, tonight on CBS. Saturday at 1 o'clock, conference crunch time on CBS Sports, NCAA hoops coverage. Tubby Smith's Kentucky Wildcats tangle with Nolan Richards and Arkansas Razorbacks, or you'll see Miami battle the number two UConn Huskies next Saturday on CBS. Here's the new senior vice president and chief operating officer of NASCAR, Mike Helton, in the driver's meeting, introducing Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas. He said, we're honored to have with us a member of the highest court in the land. He said, okay, after Bill France, the second highest <laughs> court in this land. Exactly. And congratulations to Mike on his new responsibilities overseeing all the day-to-day -day activities of NASCAR. Bill France, Jr. remains chief executive officer and president. Yeah, and Mike Helton's a nice guy. You see Rusty Wallace right now. He is flying around this racetrack. This front group, they're closing in on some pretty good race cars. Darrell Waltrip is in jeopardy of going a lap down in just a second. Just in front of several good race cars in front of him. Well, their speed has picked up since he's picked up the draft. Those cars are coming up the lap. He's running about 47.50 now, and he had slowed down to about 47.75 to 80, but he's picking up the draft of those cars, and the closer they get, the faster they'll go. Fellas, I can't, I can't 
put a finger on it as to why this is going on, but can you imagine we're halfway, I mean, it's just that the driving is so excellent this year. Here we are, 185 mile an hour average. We have had not one caution. When Buddy Baker set that record uh, back in 1980 at 177 miles an hour, we had five cautions, 15 laps under yellow. Hasn't been one today. The execution of these guys, amazing with these restrictor plate engines. Buddy, the, your record uh, could be challenged out here. You know what? I'd rather have a good, safe race than to keep a record. So this is a great race right now. They're getting around here. And in the meeting this morning, in the driver's meeting, they said, OK, you guys are the greatest drivers in the world. Act like it. Let's go to Ralph Shaheen. Mike, Rusty Wallace has won plenty of races over his career, but the other night at dinner, he told me the story about the first race he ever won. It was a heat race in a late model stock car. He says, you know, I was so excited. I was transferring on to the main event. I got the car into the main event. We started the race. I forgot to gas the thing up, and I run out of fuel just a few laps in. Something tells me he won't have that problem today. There's Wallace's number two beginning to lap his brother, Mike Wallace and some of these other cars. That is one great thing about the heroes of NASCAR. None of them came out of high school to full scholarships. None of them came out of college to a million dollar signing bonus. Every one of these drivers started out in a quarter mile track running Saturday night somewhere, be it Caribou, Maine or El Cajon, California or anywhere in between. There are thousands of short tracks to race every weekend. And if you're having fun today, folks, get out and see one of them this summer because that's where the future stars of this circuit will come from. And every fan in that grandstand, that's where they started out also. That's where your fan base comes from to make this great event, the Daytona 500. There's a racetrack in every state but Rhode Island. And they've got a pretty good one right next door at Seacock, Massachusetts. The Winston Racing Series of NASCAR runs on those short tracks all summer long. So uh, call NASCAR or, as we say, check your local listings and get out to see a race this summer. Kenny Wallace is down on the track apron as they come through the tri-oval here, and he is off the pace. He is definitely off the pace. Looks like smoke coming from underneath the car, and also the Elliott Sadler car, number 21, is in the pits. Ned, he had drifted Earth. way up high on the racetrack one lap ago, and the rookie driver driving for the Wood Brothers, who have won this race five times, has an early stop. Yeah, and that was right in front of the leaders. When he went up high there, you could see how fast the leaders were going by there. Kenny Wallace has lost, apparently, the engine. No oil pressure he radioed to his crew. And I doubt if he'll be able to coast back around to the pits. It'll be interesting to see whether they get the car off the racetrack somewhere where they won't need to throw a caution or will they just stop out there somewhere. I'm going to make a little bet here. I bet he does not let his brother have to have a caution right now. He's going to probably pull that car off somewhere out of the way. The drivers were advised in the drivers' meeting this morning that there are several locations on the backstretch where they can turn in out of harm's way. We'll see if Wallace chooses to do so or try to get to the pits and see if they can make repairs. We've been caution free here so far and we're six laps from halfway. He's still out there just on the edge of the racetrack. And there's a $10,000 bonus for the halfway and they see that Jeremy Mayfield has taken over second from Dale Jerry. Got up there with his teammate. Caution, well, caution. He is out. Oil on the racetrack reports on some of the in-car radios. So they will come to the caution flag for the first time today. And they'll race back to the caution flag. Some of those drivers are about to go a lap down, and Steve Park is one of them. He will stay on the lead lap, but Jeff Burton was not so lucky. He just had gone a lap down. As well as Darrell Waltrip and the other guys. That is really bad racing luck when you get caught like that. Caution come out the next lap. Yeah. First caution of the day, and we were coming up anyway on the second round of green flag pit stop. So Dick Bergeron, pit road will be a busy place. Maybe Rusty Wallace didn't want to see this caution flag, but Dale Jarrett sure did. He ran over some debris on the racetrack about a half or three laps, three quarters of a lap ago. He didn't know if he'd cut a tire down or not. Right now, that's all going to be academic because he will be coming in, as will everybody else, for four tires. You can see that Kenny had pulled off the racetrack, but the oil was the reason for the caution. Last year, the first caution flag in the race didn't occur until lap 126. We are 95 laps into the Daytona 500. Five laps from halfway. There are still 31 cars on the lead lap, and all of those will be coming into the pits. When they open pit road to the competitors, only those cars on the lead lap will be allowed to pit. Cars that are one or more laps down have to wait until the second time by before they can come in and get their service. 
on pit road, whether it's under the green flag or under caution, the cars are limited to 55 miles an hour. In the interest of safety for the pit crews, seven men are allowed to jump over the wall and service the race cars. Kenny Wallace getting a push from one of the wreckers to come back around either to pit road or the garage area. As they line up and peel off, all the lead lap cars this time should come to pit road. Ricky Rudd is one of those who had just gone a lap down, so he'll have to stay out there a lap. We're watching first, second, and third place, top to bottom, on the left side of your screen. Dick Bergman. Dale Jarrett in the pits right now. He's the one that was lucky to catch that caution flag. Robbie Hancock's going to do the front tires. Brad Parrott's on the back. Steve Allen's on the gas. Mike Ford on the jack. Going to make a full tire change here. To Ralph. Rusty Wallace's crew going to work. Bill Wilburn changing the front tires. Mark Armstrong working on the rears. They make no changes to the car. He had a great stop. He gets out just in front of Dale Jarrett. That's right where they wanted him. He is in great shape. They are really pumped down here. To Bill Stevens. Mike Skinner just completed his stop. Two cans of fuel, four tires. He was out in 18 seconds. A fine stop for the Lowe's crew. So coming off pit road, Rusty Wallace leads Dale Jarrett once again. Jeremy Mayfield is about three spots further back after pit stops. And the hood is up on Bobby Labonte's car. That is not a good sign. We had heard earlier that, he, that the engine had a little bit of a skip in it. They're probably looking at wires and things to see if they can find it. Dick Bergman? Well, Dale Jarrett's also got a problem. He's apparently picked up some sort of a hole in the front fender, and they are going to bring that car back in again on pit road. You saw the problems that happen when there are troubles on pit road with a green flag racing. Guy gets out of the lead pack, and he is really in trouble. Meanwhile, the 18, Bobby Labonte, still on pit road. They are trying to find that skip. They have tried to figure it out all day. This time they're taking no chances. Look at this. We've got one, two, three, four mechanics under the hood simultaneously. Five of them all trying to find it. And you heard it. That engine is not running sweet right now. It has decidedly got a skip. Tough day for Labonte. They had run so well early on. Now, Dick, they have the luxury of time. With the field running behind the pace car under caution, it gives Labonte about two minutes and 30 seconds to service that car. He will still be on the lead lap when he comes around. We're under caution at lap 96. CBS coverage continues after this message and a word from your local station. Beer Sports Race Summary is sponsored by Budweiser, the official beer of NASCAR. Hey, race fans, this Bud's for you. Back live at Daytona International Speedway after 113 of 200 laps. We have had five leaders, the current leader, Rusty Wallace, an average speed now of just over 174 miles an hour, just the one caution, and of the 43 starters, just two cars are out. John Andretti, Kenny Wallace, both with engine problems. Let's go to Dick Bergman. Tony Stewart has pulled into pit road where they're going to try to do a quick diagnosis and see if they can figure out what's wrong with the electrical system of his car. If they can't fix it, quickly here on pit road. He will go behind the wall, pull a valve cover, and lose many laps. At any rate, he has no chance to win the Daytona 500 in his rookie start. Mike? The Farmer Indy Racing League champion was the second fastest driver in qualifying, started here on the outside pole. Ernie Irvin working low on the racetrack, trying to pick up spots as things get racy in that lead pack. Right behind Jeff Gordon, there's Irvin inside Terry Labonte. Who's up about as high as Terry has run today in that red number five right there next to Urban. Well, I'll tell you what, Jeff Gordon hadn't got many friends out there today. They're ganging up on him. Every time he gets a good run, they'll move the line out on him. Buddy, one of the racing papers did a survey. What was the best? What was the worst race of the year? Number one answer, one out of five responses, any race Jeff Gordon won. <laughs> he is good. He wins a lot. Some people love that. Some folks don't. On the upper left of our screen, like Robert Presley there, displayed in green, that means he's gained a spot in the last lap. Mark Martin, you see, displayed in red, that means he is dropping back. Yeah, Mark was in eighth place about two laps ago, but he's in a thick pack of cars, so it's not hard to lose seven or eight positions. Ralph Shaheen. Well, let's find out from crew chief Jimmy Fettig what the story is with Mark Martin. He's been watching him all day long. Here he comes. Jimmy, you guys want
won the shootout, but struggling today. What's the problem? Well, it don't seem like nobody wants to work with us, so well, I don't know. we'll see if we can get some friends out there. Well, the week... Mike, we were listening in on the scanner, and Mark has been screaming to his spotters, make me some friends. A lot of deals <laughs> trying to be made on the roof up above you. Now, two floors up above us on the roof, every car has a spotter in radio contact, kind of like mission control with the astronauts. They tell the driver when he's clear going into the corner, when there's no cars in his blind spot, and the spotters talk to each other, trying to link cars that are running together, like Elliot Sadler in the 21 just ahead of Mark Martin, trying to get cars and make deals to go together to move up. Yeah, and Elliot Sadler is a lap down, but you can see he's running just as fast as the lead group right now, so Mark's kind of caught up there, and he needs somebody that is on the lead lap that's running as fast as these guys leading. Dick Bergman? I'm with Tony Stewart, who's just pulled his helmet off. Tony, what is going on with the two cars? I don't know. We're both jinxed today, that's for sure. I guess uh, I brought all my IRL luck over here now. Every time I ran anything, it seems like a tear a motor up. So, uh, What's the racetrack like, Tony? Uh, the wind's pretty tough right now. I mean, a lot of guys are out there, and uh, we're a, lot, a lot of us are having trouble off the turn two with the cars pushing. So, uh, you know, these guys have done a great job. We keep making adjustments, and the car kept getting better. We just can't get the motor to run now. Is it blowing you around? Yeah, the wind's pretty strong right now. Uh, it's, you know, after you get about eight or ten laps on the tires, it's making the cars push really hard off turn two. All right, they're going to try to at least find out what's wrong with this one. If they can, they can maybe make an adjustment to Bobby Labonte's car and get him to run better. Mike? Tony Stewart in the Indy Racing League would either win, it seems, or blow up, and sometimes blow up while leading on the way to a win. But he has a lot of talent. You'll hear a lot from him this year. I'm sure of that. I'll tell you one thing. Jeff Gordon can get shuffled back to eight, tenth place, and all of a sudden he just comes right back up on the lead group. He's strong. But it looks like there might be some a hot dog wrapper. Some, what is that white spot? Paper plate. There? Yep. It looks like a paper plate right on Rusty Wallace's grill. For more on that, here's Ralph. Well, Robin Pemberton, you got a plate in front of your uh, grill on the left side of the car. Is that going to affect the temperatures of Rusty's machine? No, it's not blocking anything where we've got an air intake or anything for the radio. So we've been watching. It's still about 190 degrees. It's okay. Are you happy with the way the car is performing? Is it good enough to stay up front? Uh, I only heard, are you happy about the car? And who wouldn't be right now? This morning... I stood behind Mike Helton and David Hoots as they ran the driver's meeting, and I looked at drivers' faces. There were a lot of grimaces and grim countenances, and the most relaxed fella in the whole meeting was Rusty Wallace, sitting, relaxed, joking with folks, Walt Zarnicki next to him for Penske. Caution! Caution is on the speedway. Slow car in the backstretch has hit the wall, coming out of turn number two. Jimmy Spencer. Jimmy Spencer, look at the damage to the right front corner of that car. That's the reason for the caution. Here they come to the line, and it will be Jeremy Mayfield leading the Daytona 500 for the first time today, and picking up picking up five season bonus points. Yeah, it's nice to have a teammate that will let you have those five points like that. You wonder if Spencer might have had a tire problem on that right front, and when it came apart, it did, did all that damage. Of course, it's completely down on the pavement now. And Ned, now there are only four drivers on the track eligible for that million-dollar bonus. Spencer was one of the Noble Five. So that leaves Dale Jarrett and Jeff Gordon, Terry Labonte, and Jeremy Mayfield. You can see the right front is not turning right now. It's pushed all the way back into the firewall there. I don't look for him to return to this race. That's a tough break for Jimmy. He came here with very high hopes, thinking he had a shot at winning that million dollar bonus. So Travis Carter's Ford will be headed back to the garage and onto the trailer. And they'll break out a new piece for Rockingham next Sunday, race two on the Winston Cup Series. Caution is out again. This is only the second one of the day at lap 122 for Jimmy Spencer. Crashing coming out of turn number three. Now pit stops would have been due at lap 150. If the team stopped now, they cannot go all the way to the finish. So, Ned, do you come in or do you stay out? I, I believe they'll come in. Look at that right front, not turning. And on the door there, the door bars almost come through the sheet metal there. You can see right along in that area right there where it hit so hard, the door bars tried to wear through to the sheet metal there. Can't get the jack under it. They'll have to lift the car by hand to prop it up, and pit road is open. Here come all the cars on the lead lap, all 28 of them for service. 
led by Jeremy Mayfield and Rusty Wallace and Jeff Gordon. Left side of your screen, first, second, and third place cars as they came in. Ralph? Mike, they wanted Jeremy Mayfield to stop a little bit short so they could get Rusty in cleanly. Earl Barbary has a car up in the air with the jack. They come around to the left side. Robin Pemberton said that this stop will take them within about 15 to 18 laps of the finish of this race. They're in great shape. I got to tell you, I've never heard Rusty so calm on the radio. He's talking so smooth and easy. He's as confident as you can get. Three laps into the Daytona 500. A crash on pit road. Two cars collide trying to miss a tire that rolled out from one of the pits. Ernie Urban's yellow number 36 and the blue number six of Mark Martin were the cars that tried to avoid that tire that got kicked out from one of the pit stalls as the cars accelerated away. Well, we'll sort that one out when we come back to Daytona International Speedway. You're watching the 41st Annual Daytona 500 live on CBS Sports. Monday night on CBS, all new episodes of comedy, starting with a special guest appearance by Ozzie Davis on Cosby, followed by the King of Queens with Kevin James and Jerry Stiller. Raymond goes on a Caribbean cruise with his mom on an all-new Everybody Loves Raymond. And you've got to see Dick Van Dyke as Ted Danson's father on Becker. Then an all-new L.A. Doctors. That's Monday on CBS. You're looking down from 1,000 feet above Daytona International Speedway from the Goodyear Blitz Stars and Stripes based in Pompano Beach. Pilot Dan Thomas and cameraman Bob Rosedale giving you these views. Let's show you what happened. Jimmy Spencer crashed in turn two to bring out the caution. And on pit road, a tire has rolled out. Looks like it might have come off of Joe Nemechek's car. You see all these cars going out, they dodge you, but Ernie Urban cuts to the right, Mark Martin has to cut square to the right. You want to know how good Mark Martin is? That would have been a big crash if he hadn't reacted, jerked that car onto the grass and around that uh, Ernie Irvin car as he was going off pit road. What a heads up run. Watch him right here. He turns it hard right, right out into the grass and that could have been about a three car pile up there. Looks like Ernie might have hit the tire just a little bit. Probably no damage done from that. If you're Mark Martin steaming down pit road, here's what you've got to do. Slide through the grass, kick it left and get going again. See, Kenny Irwin pulls out. That tire's already out there. He just ducks inside it. Doesn't appear to be any harm done. No aerodynamic damage to those cars. Bill Elliott has taken the lead. I think he only changed two tires, Mike. He was out of the pits very quickly. And so Elliott wanted to get those five bonus points for leading. He Earlier in the race, he only changed two tires and was run, able to run pretty competitively. So he did it again. There you see where the leaders came out of pit road. Bill Stevens. Well, if you had surmised, Ned, it was Joe Nemechek's tire that Mark Martin cracked as he was leaving pit road. So Bill Elliott is the leader. There is a look at Joe Nemechek. He is on the lead lap in 22nd place. Rusty Wallace is second. Mike Skinner is third. Jeff Gordon fourth. Jeremy Mayfield, who was the leader coming into the pits, is the fifth place car. Dale Jarrett is sixth. Terry Labonte seventh. Chad Little, Kenny Irwin, and Michael Waltrip are the top ten. And we're ready to go racing. Ernie Irvin's 11th. Kenny Schrader, Mark Martin, Ward Burton, Robert Presley, the top 15. Three laps to go. Now here are some cars that feel this might be their best shot to get a lap back with the car out there that only changed two tires, that being Bill Elliott leading the race. So they figure, well, maybe we'll be just a little bit faster with four tires, so they're going to make a run for it. There's Jeff Burton right here down on the inside trying to make it three deep. He wants to catch Bill Elliott. This is the 11th Daytona 500 that Bill Elliott has led in 21 starts. Somebody better tell Bill Elliott. He's running pretty darn good. I was just watching the two car there, Rusty Wallace. He's led much of this race. He didn't gain much on uh, Bill Elliott down the back straightaway. Kind of funny. Thursday in the qualifying race, no Ford led a lap. 
Look at this. No Chevrolet or Pontiac has been able to get to the front since early stages of this race. Okay, you see Rusty Wallace hung out to dry there on the outside. Well, Mike Skinner down on the inside as we see these cars go by. Skinner has a very fast race car. This is him right there in the blue and yellow, number 31. Gordon down on the inside. Rusty Wallace in the blue and white, number two Ford. Up on the outside, but Skinner's the one that wants to challenge Bill Elliott. Before today, Rusty Wallace has only led 11 laps in the Daytona 500 in all the times he's been here. And just today, he's climbed to 27th in the all-time leader rankings. Wow, look at this. Terry Labonte caught meat in the sandwich there as they come off the corner. He'll rectify that. He'll try to get back down on the inside if he possibly can. And it looks like he will behind his teammate, Jeff Gordon. Yeah, please don't say rectify. <laughs> Snap my neck around. <laughs> looking to see where the wreck was. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Here's Earnhardt down on the bottom right side of your screen. He's trying to dash back up from the midst of that lead pack up to the front. He's Since the early going, he's had a tough day. You're exactly right. And track position means everything. Here's the two teammates trying to work together there. Mike Skinner on the outside as they go down the back straightaway side by side. Jeff Gordon leading that inside line into turn three, lapped car of Derek Cope, the 1990 winner. Just behind him, then Ricky Rudd. Here's Ralph. Mike, to make matters worse for Dale Earnhardt, he's had to switch over to his backup ignition box, so things are not all well with the number three car. You're riding with the uh, number three car, Dale Earnhardt, as you see him right in front of him there. That's Michael Walter looking to the inside of Kenny Irwin as they head down into turn one. Bill Stevens. Chad Little's car is running like a freight train. They were going to make an adjustment to it earlier, but crew chief Jeff Hammond said the track has come to him. Also, he says that he would love to run with Terry Labonte. Yesterday in happy hour, they were running their fastest speeds with the number five car. Look at this. New tires, suddenly everybody's Superman. Buddy. Oh, yeah, yeah. But give, give them about ten laps, and you'll see the better handling race car back at the front again. Tough drive to get there for some of these. Ricky Rudd stuck in the middle. He is one lap down. Rusty wanted to look on the inside, but no room there as we see all of that racing back in the pack. Well, boy, I'll tell you one thing. Anybody that remembers a few years back knows that Bill Elliott knows this racetrack. Well, he's running about 47 and a half seconds. We've talked about, you know, those seconds, how long it takes him to get around here, and that's right in there with the, some of the best laps we've seen turned here this afternoon. 70 laps to go. The boards of Bill Elliott, Rusty Wallace, Jeremy Mayfield, and Dale Jarrett. Lead the Chevrolet of Jeff Gordon in the 41st Annual Daytona 500. Lead change. Rusty Wallace back to the front. Here comes his teammate, Jeremy Mayfield, number 12, right with him, and Dale Jarrett. Tony Stewart is back in the race after a stay behind pit wall. And one. Four cars, single file, double file behind as Bill Elliott loses the lead and a couple of spots more. 29 laps to go here at Daytona. We'll rather 69 laps to go. We'll be right back. It continues next month on CBS from Texas Motor Speedway. The Coca-Cola 300 Bush Race, March 27th, and the Texas 500 Sunday, March 28th. And the first network telecast of a NASCAR race in primetime, the Pepsi 400, Saturday night, July 3rd. Trouble, turn three. Dale. Car spinning up into the wall, mid-pack. Dale Jarrett, one of them. Mark Martin is in it. Elliot Sadler, the rookie. And car spin. See Terry Lamani. Steve Park is in, in there, 99. Jeff, Jeff Burton, yeah. Joe Nemechek, 42. Sterling Marlin, number 40. Uh, Jeffrey Bodine, former winner. Boy, that Ward Burton, heavy damage on his Pontiac. Those cars were all running so close together. And Dale Jarrett trying to win his third Daytona 500. Will not today. There's Sterling Marlin in the 40 right there. Joe Nemechek in the 42, I saw him. Here comes Jared out of the car. That's great to see. Wow. 
a grinding crash entering turn three at lap 135 has brought out this third caution of the day. And Jarrett, who had a chance to win over $2 million today. And Terry Labonte also had that same chance, and he's out of it. Mark Martin, tremendous amount of damage to his car. Gets a good deal out of Ford Taurus, only driven 300 miles. Whew. No, that, you no, see, he's been around backwards. To... You see the cockpit is all intact. Mark is okay. Trying to see if that car will steer. There is Rich Bickle, the Wisconsin driver. Boy. Steve Park in the yellow fire suit. All discussing what happened to start that melee. That is Jeffrey Bodine driving yeah. for Joe and Nancy Bessie. The 86 winner. And look at the litter in turn three. That is a mess. Ten race cars, wreckers and support vehicles. There's Dale Jarrett. You can see he's not hurt. He's a little, not happy. little aggravated, but I tell you, you can tell he's walking no limps. He's doing what happened. Elliot Sadler has been helped from his car. He's walking along to the ambulance. That's Terry Labonte inside the ambulance sitting that Dale Jarrett's in conversation with. Anytime there's an accident on a major super speedway, the drivers are required to climb into the ambulance and take the ride to the care center to be checked over. Let's see if we can see what happened entering turn three. Well, there's Dale Jarrett right there. As they head off in the corner, he goes down on the flat part of the racetrack. He might have had a little bit of a bump from the 28 car, his teammate, as they went in there. At 190 miles an hour, it's almost impossible for the brakes to slow the car to miss the incident. You steer for the hole and hope it's still there when you get there. Boy, that track closed up in a hurry. When, when one car spun, they're as close as they were running together, they had to get a lot of other cars involved. Let's and Ricky Rudd. Right there at the start of that replay, was there contact between Jarrett and the 28? Yeah, it looked like there was just light contact, just enough to turn him down on flat and shoot him right back up in front of oncoming traffic. Another angle. The oh. cars you're watching, oh, Jarrett's already gone at that point. And just shoots back up across the racetrack right into Terry Labadee. And then other cars, there's Mark Martin in six car. There it's comes Ward Burton in number 22. Jeffrey Bodine, he was the next to him there. Robert Rich, Presley. Someone's Bickle, upside Ricky down Rock. there. That was Bodine, I believe, that went on his route. Let's show you Dale Jarrett's view. Showed you which car was upside down. Brother. From Mark Martin's roof cam. From Ward Burton. from the Goodyear blimp. Well, this will tell the story right here. Okay, there's the 28 down on the inside of the 88, just a little bit as they start into that corner. And I believe they made a little bit of contact. And I think maybe what happened is Jeff Gordon had just gone by Jerry going down the back stretch, and Kenny Irvin was going to follow Jeff Gordon into that turn, and uh, Dale Jarrett didn't know he was there, and when he went into the corner, he go go down a little bit. Let's watch it right here again. Here we go. Is there contact right there? From this angle, Boy, it, doesn't it, did, to be. it didn't look like it. It looked like maybe the air was disturbed on the rear spoiler there, and it just jumped off the ground and down on the flat part of the racetrack. And from there, you're you're just a passenger. Well, let's ride with Kenny Irwin and see if his car nudges from contact 
with Dale Jarrett. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. That looked like contact to me. Folks, if you could ride on a skateboard behind one of these cars at 190 miles an hour and just touch the bumper, you could spin it around. They're that close to the edge of control. Ralph? The key on this stop, Mike, is going to be the gas man, Bob Tracy for Rusty Wallace. Maybe they can get enough fuel in to get them all the way. They're going to put on tires. They're not making any changes. They left themselves plenty of room with Jeremy Mayfield. First one's in, first one's out. That's exactly what they were hoping for. Problems with Mayfield stopped a little bit slower. Dale Earn does get away quicker than Mayfield. To Nick Bergeron. The 31 car, Mike Skinner, took just two tires on the outside, and these guys are all high-fiving themselves. They have done a terrific pit stop. Less than 17 seconds for Mike Skinner's crew. And they're rewarded, Dick, by being the first team off pit road. Mike Skinner will have the lead in this race when we go back to green. 138 laps complete, 62 to go. Daytona 500 coverage continues after this match and a word from your local station. Welcome back to Daytona. We're under caution. 139 laps. Teammates Joe Nemechek and Sterling Marlin discuss the aftermath of Dale Jarrett's spin next to their wrecked race cars. From Dale Jarrett's car, let's ride along as the two-time Daytona 500 winner headed for turn three. again from Mark Martin. And from Kenny Irwin's car. caution with 60 laps to go. We'll come back and give you a rundown on the cars involved in the incident and whether or not they're able to get back into the Daytona 500 right after this. One lap and we'll go back to green. 18 cars on the lead lap. Jerry Mayfield was up front, but look on this pit stop. He comes out of the pits in eighth place. And the crew, very disheartened over that stop. Yeah, they knew it. They knew it was not a real good pit stop. Dick Bergman. Well, Robert Yates owns both Kenny Irwin's car and Dale Jarrett's car that were involved in that incident. What did it look like to you? You've been watching the replays. Well, I, I've seen one replay, and uh, you know, I don't just have to wait and see what, what really happened. I didn't, I didn't see it close enough to comment on it. Okay, no comment from Robert Yates. Very diplomatic car owner at the moment. On the replay from Kenny Irwin's car, you could hear the engine decelerate down the back straightaway as he tried to give Dale Jarrett room to get in line. That was what Irwin told his crew chief over the radio. I tried to give him room to get in. Let's see what Bill Elliott saw through all this. Elliott now the 17th place car. Look to the left side of the screen right there. Did they touch? We're back under green. 12 cars involved in that accident. Only one, Ward Burton, has come in and out of the pits. cars on the lead lap led by Mike Skinner in the Chevrolet. Rusty Wallace in second. Dale Earnhardt, Skinner's teammate, is in third place. Trying to get up and draft with his Richard Childress stablemate. And Michael Waltrip in fourth place having a great run here today in the car number seven, the white and blue car. That is Jim Gordon in fifth. Ernie Irvin sixth. Kenny Irwin. Here's Irwin on the inside. Seventh. Michael Waltrip to the high side in number seven.
seven laps to go. Boy, Jordan made a great move down the inside of Dale Earnhardt going into turn one and oh. able to make that pass. I didn't know if he was going to make it or not. You know, I, I really believe right now that Jeff Gordon may have the fastest car on the speedway, and Earnhardt knows that his car is not quite as quick. And like, you get, once you move like that, you have to build momentum back up again, and you see how far back Dale Earnhardt has dropped. A while ago, Earnhardt restarted 16th and climbed his way quickly to 6th. Now, Dick Berger, and they had an ignition problem they diagnosed earlier, and then what happened to repair it, and what was the effect on Earnhardt's speed? Well, they just changed ignition boxes, which is something the driver can do right in the car. He flips a couple of switches, and he's onto a backup ignition system. And what happened is Earnhardt had lost 200 RPM. The engine had simply slowed down, and that, of course, slows the race car down as well since they run wide open all the way around. He said his problems today, for sure, a bad pit stop ignition problem, but don't count Dale Earnhardt out. This is Daytona, after all. Some heavy racing back there in the pack. Three wide. As we've seen it several times, that's Wally Dollar back in the red car, down on the inside, Ricky Rudd in the middle, Dave Marcus up there on the outside. That's Kevin LePage in the 16 there. He's front in the, uh, it's, these cars are painted so much alike, it looks like Ricky Rudd. You're right. 16 car, Kevin LePage, who's having a, a good run here today. You know, Ned, both LePage and Dollenbach, we haven't talked about much today, but that dark red number 25 of Dollenbach and that Dayglow machine, number 16 of LePage, are right up in this lead pack, 11th and 12th place. Yeah, Ricky Rudd has said he's, he's behind the wall. He's out of the race right now in his court. Drivers involved in that crash out of the race. Dale Jarrett, Jeffrey Bodine, Terry Labonte. Mark Martin's car still being worked on on pit road. Joe Nima checks out. Stephen Quart, Sterling Marlin, Jeff Burton, Rich Bickle, Elliot Sadler, and repairs being made to Ricky Rudd's car. 12 cars in all involved at lap 135. Skinner first, Rusty Wallace second. 1984, Mike Skinner was on Rusty Wallace's pit crew. He was a tire changer, and he remembers thinking every time Rusty came on pit road, I should be in that seat. He got ready to quit. Daryl Bryant, the crew chief, then said, what would it take to have you stay with us, Mike Skinner? He said, Rusty's seat. He's got his own seat today, and he's got a pretty good view right now. First place, Skinner over Wallace. Mike Joy. That's a great story, Ken. <laughs> Mike Skinner came down here and, and for a while, I think even swept the floors over at Richard Petty's shop, trying to make the move from California short tracks into Winston Cup racing. You know, when, when Skinner went with uh, Childress to run the uh, truck division, everybody said, I don't understand that. Richard Childress saw something in this guy that he thought he would be a winner, and he was a champion in that division, and that speaks highly of the truck races also, because he, right now, he's leading the biggest race in, in all of what's to come. Richard Childress had once loaned Mike Skinner an engine for a race, kept an eye on him, and he said, I saw what I liked, and never forgot that. Ralph Shaheen. Mike, this piece here in my hand is what is going to make the difference in this race here today. These are the Jets. The one who jet guessed right on the jet is the one who's going to get the best fuel mileage today. Remember that weather changed dramatically here this morning, and you had to adjust these jets. These cars will average about six miles to the gallon. The right jet gets you the most fuel. That gets you to victory lane. I just talked to Kevin Hamlin, crew chief for Dale Earnhardt, Jeremy Mayfield's crew chief, Paul Andrews, and Rusty Wallace's crew chief, Robin Pemberton. Right now, they're all very much up in the air as to how much fuel they're going to have left as this race winds down. Mike, when they talk about jets, let's explain what that is. That's a, where the uh, fuel goes down into the carburetor. The bigger the jet, the more fuel goes down through it. The smaller the jet, less fuel. The problem with leaning them out too much and making that jet too small, it'll burn a hole in the top of the piston. So it's highly uh, a balance act to get these cars to get good mileage. 52 laps to go. Bill Stevens. With Sterling Marlin, took a pretty good lick. You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. It, uh, the Coors Light shift is not too good, but uh, it looked like 28 popped 88, turned him around, and uh, just he's right there on him, went nowhere to go, and uh, we piled everybody up. But they did give us a little more plate or something. I mean, you just get all bunched up. It's nowhere to go, and uh, at least more power. 
Two-time winner, won't make it number three this year. That restrictor plate sits beneath the carburetor on top of the intake manifold. As we said earlier this week, it takes the volume of air the size of a grapefruit trying to float through that engine and restricts it down to four holes each the size of a grape. The engine can't get enough air for the drivers to have enough power to pull out and pass. Dick Bergeron. Mark Martin is getting ready to finally leave his pit area after an extended stay. This poor guy's got no luck here. He's dropped out of this race with a crash, engine failure, overheating. He's run out of gas. Last year it was a ring and pinion, and here he goes again with another crash problem. Tough luck for Mark Martin today. He had a great car. NASCAR said at the driver's meeting they'll have one chance to get broken, repaired cars back up to an acceptable speed on the racetrack. Then they would have to go to the garage. 40, 50 laps to go at Daytona. Sports Race Summary is sponsored by Haviland Formula 3 Motor Oil. Add more life to your car. Three quarters of the way through the 41st running of the Daytona 500 and seven leaders, 12 lead changes in all. The average speed now dropped to just over 160 miles an hour. We've had three cautions, flags, and 12 cars are now out of the race and including on that last incident, Burton, Park, Terry Labonte will not return today. Mike Joy. Thanks, Greg. There is still quite a battle for the lead in this race. 20 cars are still running on the lead lap and another 16 cars are running laps down. Lead change, Rusty Wallace now at the front with Dale Earnhardt. Here's how he overhauled Mike Skinner. Looks to the inside, going down into turn three. Has help from Earnhardt as they motor by. The teammates don't mean much right now. They're, they're trying to make moves here. Here comes Gordon. And that's how they run right now. Now Kenny Irwin is the driver up on the high side of the Ford. And Kenny Irwin in a lot of trouble right now. He's hung out there by himself. As you can see, the faster line on the bottom. Here comes Skinner by him. He'll, he'll be about five or six cars get by him before he can get back in line. Rusty Wallace back to the front. He's led more laps in this Daytona 500 than in all the 16 he's run before. Dale Jarrett, two-time winner of this race in the garage with Bill Stevens. Dale Jarrett, obviously an unhappy way to end the day. Uh, not what we had planned for sure, but uh, had a good race car. Uh, it's just unfortunate, Jim, but uh, get cars bunched up like that and uh, things are going to happen. Uh, you know, I had to check up a little bit over in two and uh, the guys went to the inside of me and I just tried to hold my line, but got tapped a little bit getting into three and uh, you know, a lot of things are going to happen when that starts. You know that the 28 was right up on you at that point. I, I wasn't sure who was there. You know, I knew that there were cars there and I just tried to give them room. You know, you get down there, everybody's got to get back in line and you run in on the apron, but uh, you know, things are going to happen and uh, you know, it's just the way it goes some days. That's a very gracious Dale Jarrett. He's learned a lot from his mom, from his mom and dad. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I thought you were going to say mom and leave dad off. No. No. no he, I, I'm proud of the way that he, he handles things. has to be very disappointed because, uh, you know, like many of these drivers, came here with thoughts of winning the Daytona 500. But there's a lot of guys here right, going at it still. And now Dale Earnhardt the block on Jeff Gordon right there. He wants to stay right behind Rusty Wallace. Yeah, you got it. A Ford against three Chevrolets right now, and you can see Jeff Gordon for getting in the rumble on the inside there. Here comes Gordon down to the inside into the trioval. He takes second from Earnhardt. Skinner is going to repay the favor his teammate put on him two laps ago. Pass by Earnhardt. Now come up and draft with him. Now that's the lap car there, the 30 there, Derek Cope. He's right in the middle of this thing, though. Well, he'd like to get up there and uh, get in front of the leader, Rusty Wallace, and then have a caution come out, and he'd get back in the thick of this thing. He's currently running in the 21st position, one lap down. Ooh, Ooh was that a bump in the back straightaway okay. between Cope and the car on the outside, Dale Earnhardt? Or either the 31 car. I'm not sure which one he touched, Mike, but it looked like they got awfully close together. I think we're about to see the second part of this. <laughs> These guys are racing right now and trying to get that great track position. You see some of Rusty's crew there looking this on, checking every lap. Well, this race could come down to the final pit stop. 
and every second you gain in the pits, that's 300 feet out on the racetrack. Now, Bill Elliott, Kyle Petty, Rick Mast, and Robert Presley all pitted at lap 141 under yellow. They may not have to stop again. Here's another look. Yep. Yep, it was Skinner. Skinner gets sideways. You see just behind him there, Dale Earnhardt. Watch them as they start down through here. Right there, they come together. And here goes Gordon, trying to move around. Once again, or Skinner trying to pass him on the outside. Mike Skinner trying to come back on the outside with Irwin waving. You saw Skinner on the outside waving to Irwin. Hey, come on, help me. Push. Let's pedal hard. And Rusty's looking in the mirror. Hey, <laughs> y'all just keep it up. Oh, yeah, he's loving that. And they're right back there running side by side. It just sets him free out front. He can't pull away from them, but at least he's running in good, clean, free air. And Kenny Irwin has a tremendously fast car. He dropped back to about ninth. He fought his way back up there. Look at him look to the outside here, down the back straightaway. Almost, yes, they are. Three abreast. Kenny Irwin way up the racetrack, and Skinner right in the middle. Let's go back to the garage, Bill Stevens. With Joe Nemechek, first half of the race, no problems, then bombs away. Yeah, it was pretty clean the first half, but uh, you know when they have those restarts, everybody gets kind of anxious, and everybody's battling for that spot, and uh, I don't know, someone got turned sideways. It's a shame for uh, you know this whole Bell South Lucent technology Chevy. Guys worked real hard, had our best qualifying run ever here at, at Daytona for the 500, and uh, end up tore up in the garage again, but I'm all right. Front row Joe, still happy to Ralph. Ray Evernham, I'm the crew chief for Jeff Gordon. Ray, are you in a good position now? Do you right where you need to be? Well, not really. It's like to be out front, but the boy, the car's just, just a little bit off. Rusty's got an awful fast car, so we're going to need some help if we're going to get out front. What do you think you'll get that from? Anybody in particular you run better with? It doesn't seem like we've got any so far today, so I don't know where it's going to come from. Uh, it's going to have to wait till everybody gets greedy at the end and uh, hope the cards fall where they may. How about fuel? You okay there? Yeah, we should just make it. We should make it by .6 of a lap. Three wide racing continues here in the Daytona 500. Winding down, 39 laps to go. Rusty Wallace trying to win his first 500. Continues to lead, 1997 race champion Jeff Gordon. Six laps to go. Up front, Rusty Wallace trying to win his first Daytona 500 in 17 years of trying. Second, Jeff Gordon, the 97 winner. Third, number three, Dale Earnhardt, last year's winner. Fourth, Mike Skinner, the 97 pole sitter. And fifth, Jeremy Mayfield, number 12, who got his breakthrough first win last season. And I'm watching Michael Waltrip in that seven car. He has driven the wheels off that car today, Ned. He really has. He, he has a good, fast race car, and he has moved around on the racetrack. He made a move while ago out there that really, uh, it was a good one. Took my breath. Positions, yeah. 20 cars on the lead lap, just two seconds apart. Will there be a final pit stop, Dick Bergeron? Well, we've been taking a little vote here, and we've taken some polls in the pit area. Larry McReynolds, who is crew chief for Mike Skinner, very confidently says, we're okay. So I came down and asked his teammate, Kevin Hamlin, who's crew chief for Dale Earnhardt, can you make it? He said, we'll see. I said, what does that mean? He said, we're gonna try. Bill Stevens? Indecision all along pit road. Spoke to Jeff Hammond after Chad Little's last pit stop. I asked him, another pit stop. He said, hmm, splash and go. Ralph. I've spoken to crew chief Robin Pemberton of our lead car, Rusty Wallace. He says, we're going for it. They can make it with not much left, but they can make it. And I've spoken to Ray Evernham, crew chief of the second place car, now dropping back to third and fourth. Jeff Gordon, they think they can barely make it as well, Mike. Wallace, the leader, Mayfield, tries to go to the low side to get with his teammate and almost piles into Earnhardt. I'll tell you what, it's cool out there today. And if Earnhardt gets to the front, these fans will be jumping up and down. They are getting wild out on that racetrack. They are flat and doing some racing. Well, what happened there is the three car, Earnhardt, he looked in the mirror and said, you know what, you're not going to do that to me. He just checked up and pulled hard left on Jeremy Mayfield. He's the black Chevrolet in the midst of that Ford sandwich. Probably Dale Earnhardt knows best how Rusty Wallace feels right now. It's Wallace's 17th 500. It took Earnhardt 20 years to win this race. 
Rusty still trying. Rusty Wallace in the lead. Earnhardt right behind. Classic 42nd annual Daytona 500. Rusty Wallace has said, bravery is not what wins races. A smart race car driver wins races. You've got to be aggressive, but you can't be aggressive and stupid at the same time. So far, he that latter category has not been in that Rusty Wallace vocabulary. He has been a smart race driver all afternoon. Let's see if it can stand up. Ken, I, I just can't reiterate enough how calm and loose he was in the driver's meeting, and he said, I've got a great car today, and he's proved it all day long. You know, I, I worked with him a couple of years ago on a test program, and the first thing I told him about Daytona, I said, you have to learn to love this place. As long as you feel badly about this place, you'll never win it. And he told me the other day, he said, you know what? It's Valentine's Day. <laughs> Fell in love, huh? Gordon down on the inside. He's just, he's having a tough time getting back up there. And crew watching on here. I wonder if then it's because that car sat on the pole here. It is so good. Oh, Wally Donald back the red 25 made contact with Mike Skinner. And all that'll do is make Skinner mad. Yeah, uh -huh. he's looking to the outside right now. But that's not the place to go. You can get in the middle. He wants to get on the inside. And it'll look like a little nudge right back there. Gave Wally a little wake up there. <laughs> hey, that was me you hit. <laughs> I didn't like it. Here he goes to the bottom again. And Dollarback comes down to hold the low line. If you're going to do it, do it in a straight line. Don't do it going in a corner. Speed, 188 miles an hour on our Circuit City onboard telemetry with Mike Skinner. 190 right down the back straightaway there. It's only 50 foot wide. You can imagine why these guys get caught up so much. The racetrack is only 50 feet wide. You turn two cars sideways, you pretty much covered the racetrack. Jeff Gordon has fallen back to seventh place. I say, is it because everybody knows that car is so fast, nobody wants to help him to the front? Well, I think what you're seeing right now, you're seeing people just go up there and give him a little try. It didn't the last 10 laps yet. No, it's 30 laps to go. He's got his teammate, Dollar back right on his back bumper now. And Skinner has been shoved back there as well. Yes, and all of them have fast race cars. Rusty Wallace is the leader. Dale Earnhardt's number three is second. Wallace's teammate, 29-year-old Jeremy Mayfield from Kentucky, is third, number 12. Michael Waltrip is fourth. And Ernie Urban has climbed to fifth. We'll be back to Daytona after this. Straightaway, one car goes spinning, flipping wildly. That is Bobby Hamilton, I believe. The number four for Morgan McClure Racing. And everybody tries to get by. They do. Caution is out. Caution flag. Fourth one of the day. They'll run back to the flag. Rusty Wallace leads them down to the caution. Ahead of Earnhardt and Mayfield and all the speculation of gas mileage need be no more. Ned, I think he'll have to come in now and oh, take all that, you know, maybe our right side tires, try to get that great track position and just take on fuel. Well, you can see a lot of damage to the front end on Bobby Hamilton's car, and it looks like he was moving around a little bit in there. Yeah, I could see him moving around. The roof flaps did deploy there where when he got around backwards, it didn't just start flipping wildly down the back straightaway. The frames of these cars are constructed so that there is a lot of sheet metal and structure up there in the front of the car to help absorb an impact such as this. Transmit as little of it to the driver as possible. Well, once again, it's so hard to pass out on the racetrack, it'll be the pit crew's turn to try to gain their driver some speed. I wonder if we'll see some gas-only pit stops or some two-tire pit stops this time. It'll be oh. interesting to see. Let's see what happens here. Okay, this is uh, Bobby Hamilton right there. Turned sideways there. All of a sudden. There was smoke from the right rear as he started around. The other car is getting by as he spins. And he's climbed out of his car, Ned. Good. Bobby is okay. Phew. That was close for 75, Ted Musgrave yes, there. Yes, it was. Take a look again here. Oh, he just come out there. He was going to the inside, and as he turned back, the back end come right around on the car. 
he pulled out of traffic and went way over to the left and then it just when he turned back it just got away whether he had a problem with the tire or not i don't know well rusty wallace is not making a pit stop mm. as we Neither watch this did back jeremy here. mayfield we watch this accident again back here on the back stretch that brought out this caution there goes bobby hamilton Dick Berger and Earnhardt's fit. Earnhardt is going to make a pit stop. It's going to be a two-tire change, most likely, although they do have tires for the left side. Going to throw the fuel in the car. Four tires for Dale Earnhardt. He asked just before this happened, he said, are we going to pit? And they just sort of gave him a little pause. They said, yeah, I think so. Earnhardt gone in 19.42 with four tires and fuel. He'll go all the way from here. Kenny Schrader leads the chase off pit road, followed by Ernie Irvin. But I want to find out from the Penske Crenipus team what happened with Rusty Wallace and Jeremy Mayfield and why they did not stop. Ralph Sheen? Well, I'm here with Robin Pemberton. Hey, Sneaky, how come you stayed out? Well, you're just as likely to make a mistake, Pitt, and I mean, the tire's been real consistent and all. We can, uh, we should be able to make it on fuel with the extra couple caution laps in there, so. You know, I did, really didn't, I figured there'd be half of them would pit, but not all of them. Now, knowing the fact that you got Jeremy right behind you, too, is that an added bonus to make me staying out on the racetrack? Never hurts. We'll see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> We're under caution with 25 laps to go. We'll be back after this message and a word from your local CBS station. CBS Sports presentation of the Daytona 500 is sponsored by Ford. The official truck of NASCAR is built Ford Tough. Brewery Fresh Budweiser, official beer of NASCAR. Hey, race fans, this Bud's for you. And by Goodyear, innovators of Ron Flat technology. Following today's coverage of the Daytona 500, get a complete wrap-up with the latest news from the track, audio interviews, and more. You'll find that at cbs.sportsline.com or log on to America Online at keyword CBS Sportsline. Tiger Woods continues to tear up Torrey Pines in the Buick International, the final round. He entered the day 15 under par. He's now 17 under and leads Billy Ray Brown by three strokes. You'll see that later on CBS Sports. From the Goodyear blimp, stars and stripes, let's watch Bobby Hamilton as he spins down the backstretch, eyes wide shut. Still was hard to tell, but it looked like Basically, what you said, he, he ran way down to the inside and all of a sudden just cut back across the road. Right. That's what it looks like from Robert Presley's car. No contact. No, and Kyle Petty almost got there. <laughs> now, whether he blew that tire or not, there was a lot of debris coming off the right rear corner there as he come by the camera. And his right rear tire was flat. Let's go to Dick Bergren. Well, Paul Andrews left his guy out there. They didn't put any tires on it. They thought they could make it with the yellow flag, but Paul, Earnhardt's got fresh tires. He's only an eighth. How about that? Can you stay out there? Well, we can stay out there. You know, the grass been staying fast. The car's been good throughout the run. We're pretty confident on this. You know, it, we could get dusted, but we'll see. Well, Earnhardt on fresh tires, the rest of them on old tires. We'll see how that works out, Mike. Thanks, Dick. There is Dale Earnhardt who came out of the pits in eighth place. Our thanks to the pilots and crew of the Goodyear Blimp Stars and Stripes for these aerial views of 200,000 people on hand here at Daytona International Speedway. In 1926, Goodyear began its commercial blimp operation with the Blimp Pilgrim. Ralph Shaheen. Mike, deals are already being done here as well as to who you're going to draft with as you try to work your way to the front. Dale Earnhardt is going to try to hook up with Jeff Gordon. That deal has been made between Richard Childress and Ray Everham. Rusty Wallace and Jeremy Mayfield lead them back to the green flag. 22 laps to go. I was at a, a friend's house last night, and he wanted to know what kind of deals. Is it money exchange or what? I said, no, no, it's not that. What you try to do is get somebody to work with you in the draft. Wallace got a great restart. Look at Mayfield. Ned, he didn't. He's three car lengths back. Yeah, he, he needs to be up there close for the drafting to really be effective, but he should catch him going into turn three. Three arrests back straight away. Now, Kenny Schrader came out of the pits first among the drivers who stopped. He took on two tires 
in Andy Petrie's Chevrolet, but now Schrader's green car climbs the racetrack. That's the one thing he didn't want to do is run side by side with, Kit, uh, with Ernie Irvin as they come off the corner side by side. That lets the two cars up front kind of rock it away from them. Yeah, that's the, the best thing that could happen to Rusty Wallace and Jeremy Mayfield, and the worst thing that could happen to Ernie Irvin. Now they're going to go three wide going into the corner. Look it's at Ernie Irvin. Right down to the bottom on Ernie Irvin. The man in black puts it to the bottom of the racetrack. Now, remember, he has the four fresh tires Earnhardt does have. I think that was a smart move. Bill Stevens? They are very happy down here in Kenny Schrader's pit. As you pointed out, that last pit stop was phenomenal. They put two tires on the car, and everything went flawlessly. And that could be a factor as we get closer to the checkered flag. Ralph? One of the keys for Dale Earnhardt is going to be that green and yellow number 97 right behind him of Chad Little. And talking to his crew chief, Jeff Hammond, this morning in the garage, he said, our car runs much better as it helps push somebody to the front. It's not a good lead car. It's a good following car. He said, I can take anybody to the front, and then once we get there, we might have one shot at taking the lead ourselves. He's going to help push Earnhardt right to the front. On this restart, Earnhardt went from eighth to third in one lap. It's dangerous to guess what these guys are <laughs> going to do. You see right there, Ernie Irvin under Chad Little. Right now, it's a three-car shootout because these guys are running side by side. Chad pulled up. Ooh, and they get together coming down the back straight. Chad pulled out to make a pass on the outside of Dale Earnhardt, but it cost him. Jeff Gordon must be running 200 miles an hour down that back straightaway as he closes in on the back bumper bump there for Ernie Irvin. You're riding with Gordon in number 24. The defending Winston Cup champ takes a three wide off turn four, and they put Ernie Irvin in the middle. Mike Skinner comes with Jeff Gordon. And Irvin goes backwards. Chad Earnhardt slices across the track in front of Chad. He had to do that. Chad Little is flying right now in the green car. The best run out there for the Roush Racing team. If they expect to win, it looks like Chad Little's got to do it. Earnhardt got a run. And here he goes to the outside. For what? Yeah, nobody to help him. So he has to fall back in line. Rusty Wallace has his teammate Jeremy Mayfield in tow. And we saw last year the third and fourth place car couldn't make a run on the leader without the second place car's help. You're watching from Dale Earnhardt back at Chad Little. And Jeff Gordon has pulled right up on the back bumper of Chad Little. And Chad Little's been moving to the outside, to the inside. I got a feeling if he made a move right now on Earnhardt, that he'd have some help to get by. 18 laps to go. Dale Earnhardt has not led this race today. Jeremy Mayfield is in his sixth 500, running in second place. In his sixth 500, Fred Lorenzen won. In his sixth 500, Cale Yarborough won. Davey Allison won his sixth try at the 500. Coincidence? Maybe not. Ralph Shaheen. Mike, remember once again that the Roush Racing Program had been horrible in restrictor plate races. Four races last year with five cars. They didn't get one top five. That's 20 attempts in a top five. Right now, Chad Little running in fourth for Roush Racing, and they've already won the Bud Shootout last week with Mark Martin. It looks like they've really turned this restrictor plate program around. Running in sixth spot right now, Mike Skinner, the teammate for Dale Earnhardt, is really on the move. He's moved up into this front group. Skinner just can't get up there to help teammate Earnhardt, who is sandwiched amongst the boards. Seventeen laps to go. Oh, boy. Seventeen years of trying. Rusty Wallace. And the guy in second place, if he was to luck up and win this race, and I'm a, I don't mean luck up, I mean get into the win, he would take all, all, way over $2 million home. He's one of the guys going for that million-dollar bonus today. An extra million if Mayfield or Gordon among these leaders should win today. And that's a million-dollar bonus for a lucky fan as well. But I don't think anybody out there is thinking about dollars. Here comes Earnhardt to the inside. He is. <laughs> Chad Little to the outside. And Gordon going with Earnhardt. They were bump drafting. You could see Earnhardt's car lose traction and down the straightaway there. Gordon actually pushed him down the back straightaway. 
And Jeremy Mayfield got caught out. He is back to seventh place. Rusty Wallace lost his best friend right there in that situation. Yeah, boy. He's going to be right up there with him. Here comes Gordon in third place now. The 97 winner and defending Winston Cup champ. Youngest driver ever to win the Daytona 500. Jeff Gordon in third in sight of the lead. Yeah, he's not through here today. Gordon led the first lap, then five more, but has not led since lap 20. Earnhardt has not led today in that number three. Back behind the first three cars, there's a war going on back there, side by side. These guys are trying to get themselves in great position for the 500 win. Some of the cars involved in that one lap 135 wreck have come back into the race. Sterling Marlin, Joe Nemechek, Steve Park. Many laps down. What they want to do is just make a few laps and get ahead of those other cars that are not able to get back out of the garage area. Let's go to the pits and Bill Stevens. The owner of Roush Racing, Jack Roush. Have you and Jeff Hammond gotten together here on strategy in the closing laps? Well, we've been looking at it uh, throughout the race. You know, the 97 John Deere car has been really getting really good mileage. We'd hope that would work to our advantage. And they filled it up with gas at the end here to get the back end down a little bit and went on ahead and put four tires on it, which uh, the, th the three car did, or the 24 car did. I'm not sure about the cars in front. I think that the 24 and the 97 have got a tire advantage. We'll see if we can use it. Obviously, they've talked strategy. Well, now, Jack Roush raises an interesting question. Rusty Wallace will have a very light fuel load at the end of this race. He did not make a pit stop. Well, how much a difference will that make? It could make a difference, Mike. Certainly, they factor that in all the time on, on setting race cars up. But as Robin Pemberton, the crew chief, pointed out earlier, the car's been pretty consistent, even after the fuel load gets down. So they were not that worried about it. But I'm wondering, too, if it might not cost them. Mike, you're actually touching there, coming off the corner. Gordon trying to get that spot in. Earnhardt caught on the outside. Here comes Jeff Gordon. Rusty will move down to pick up a little bit of push from Gordon. And Mike Skinner pushing Jeff Gordon right by his teammate, Dale Earnhardt. Boy, this thing's getting exciting. Look at Gordon look to the inside of the two car. Now I want you to watch how close he puts the bumper of that Chevrolet right up under. He did it to Earnhardt on the last lap. He'll try to do it on Rusty Wallace coming off of turn two the next time. He wants to stick that bumper right up under the back end of Rusty Wallace's car. Try to make him loose coming off of that corner and pass him like he did Earnhardt the last time around. Let's see if he tries it. Yeah, the, you know, sitting right back here in third spot, Mike Skinner, he's watching him do this. He's learning a lesson, but look on the outside there. Chad Little gets cut off as they come off the corner. Uh -oh. and Skinner and almost turned him around. I thought it was a wreck. I don't know how yeah. Mike Skinner hung on to that race car. And still just digging. Kenny Irwin has moved up in there also in the 28 car. Bernhardt drops under him. Dale Earnhardt pulls up on his teammate, Mike Skinner. Now, they have two teammates. Ken Schrader is part of an alliance with that team. There's 33. Kenny Schrader, Andy Petrie Racing, Dale Earnhardt Racing, and Richard Childress Racing. Look at this mess! Yes, and a slow Oh, man! It did work. I thought it was going to be a crash. They have to wide for the lead. This is going to get exciting. Look at Earnhardt coming up on, on the back of Jeff Gordon down the back straightaway. He'll try to make it four wide, but Michael Walker is going to try to make it five wide. Ten laps to go this time. Seventeen times the driver to lead with ten to go did not win the 500. Four times that was Dale Earnhardt. Let me tell you, teammates are out right now. Rusty Wallet fighting back on the inside. Shows a lot of power right there by himself in the middle of this front line here. Chevy inside, Ford in the middle, Chevy outside. Little paint traded. Wallace, Skinner in against Gordon. And look at Earnhardt, the number three, trying to push Jeff Gordon to the lead. Earnhardt looked to the inside just for a second there as they head down into turn one. And they got Rusty in the middle there. And look at him go backwards. Can you hold your breath for 10 laps? Boy, this is exciting. You don't get any better than this. And I'm going to tell you, if it comes to just plain nerve, don't count out that Waltrip kid there. Michael Waltrip can drive the wheels off his car and has all day long. Michael Waltrip has not won a Winston Cup point race. Kenny Irwin and Chad Little, 28-97. Those Fords way up high. They're chasing Schrader. Now you got five Chevrolets out front. Boy, how things change. Yeah, for a long time, it was Fords out front. Any Irwin trying to get 
up there and change that about. Look. What a what a great shot. You're looking out at Dale Earnhardt's car down the front straightaway, right behind Gordon as he has him hit off into turn one. Three wide they are once again with Skinner in the middle. How frustrated must Dale Earnhardt be that he has not led a lap today? Well, it's, it's not over yet. You know the one that counts. If you don't lead but 40 feet, you want to lead to the checkered flag. All right, what does Dale Earnhardt do to pass Jeff Gordon? He's going to have to have some help. He's got help. Look at Waltrip there in third. He'll have to make a move and have somebody to go with him and get that bumper right up. And that's the way Jeff Gordon got by him. He stuck that bumper right up under Earnhardt a little bit earlier, got his car loose. Earnhardt knows how to do that better than anybody else. Dick Bertrand. Richard Childress, you've been watching all this stuff. What's Earnhardt got to do here? Well, you know, it's hard to say. You know, he, he's going, he's got the experience. He's going to do his best. You know, I can't say nothing. You know, it's been a heck of a race all day. And Skinner's done a good job. Who knows what's going to happen here again? Is he going to move him out of the way? Is Earnhardt going to move Gordon? I don't know. You know, Dale, he's got some moves on him left. Ralph? The conversation on the radio with Jeff Gordon is be, be patient. Eight laps to go, seven laps to go. Watch your rear view mirror. They don't want him to get too far out ahead. Plenty of laps of racing still to go. From first to 17th is only 17 seconds with eight laps to go. Mike, the man that made that move that Gordon put on Earnhardt a while ago is the man that made that move famous, and he's running in second spot right now. Jeff Gordon won his qualifying race here as a rookie in 93. Finished fifth that year in the 500, fourth the next year. Wasn't a contender again until 97 when he won it. I think it's 1.7 seconds. Yes, thank you, Dad. place. Wow. They are so close. When they're running that close, you can miss a decimal point. I promise you. True. You know, we got a new ball game here. Look at these guys in that second group. They've caught those lead cars now. We have about a 10, 12 car left here for the lead and any one of them could win it as you've seen a driver running in the lead one lap can be back to eighth place the next six laps to go when they come back and report of trouble on the 12 car of jeremy mayfield he has dropped off the lead pack and comes to pit road his chance at that extra million dollar bonus wow gone. is he out of fuel he, can't. he didn't pit if he is rusty he won't be very far behind him i'm afraid four tires for mayfield dick and the answer is they did gamble on tires mike and they've got one that's going down mayfield oh. flat tire this late in the daytona 500. Richard Petty, who won this race seven times, said it best. The best you can do on any given day is put yourself in a position to win, and then circumstances will dictate the outcome. You know, I was just talking about Rusty Wallace did not take on tires. He's all the way back to 10th place now. Yeah, I, I think as Mayfield goes out of the pits, I really think that was a mistake, them not stopping during that caution. Now we've got a six-car breakaway from the pack. Jeff Gordon Chevrolet, Dale Earnhardt Chevy. Michael Waltrip driving for a new team in a Chevrolet. Kenny Irwin, last year's Rookie of the Year in a Ford. Ken Schrader, third fastest qualifier in a Chevy. And truck champ Mike Skinner, the 97 pole sitter in a Chevrolet. Two guys that have dominated the 90s, are first and second. Right behind them, guys, has never won a race here. This thing's going to get wild. Earnhardt had a try on Jeff Gordon. He is keeping the pressure on. Earnhardt last year led the closing laps. Nobody could get by him. So he knows how to win it from in front. Does he know how to win it from behind? He still has to have help, and he can get it from that seven-car Michael Walker. Friday in the International Race of Champions, Earnhardt bided his time, and on the last turn of the last lap, after everyone had written him off being two car lengths back, he made a run and won it. I'm going to give you something else to think about. If they start running side by side, Kenny Schrader's not out of this, as he's trying to make a move on Kenny Irvin now. In Dale Earnhardt's pit, Earnhardt, saying a prayer. here earlier in the week. Back home in Charlotte, watching it on TV. Three abreast Kevin LePage in between Marcus and Wallace and Jerry Nadeau. Battle going on back there for seventh. Here's Kenny Irwin trying to make a move on Michael Walter here at the start-finish line. And coming with him is Mike Skinner. Yesterday, old age and treachery, Randy LaJoy overcame youth and enthusiasm. 
Casey Atwood, and Adam Petty. What about today? That 28 car's got a run coming off of this turn. Is it enough of a run to make a move on Dale Earnhardt? Gordon's crew chief, Ray Abraham, watching. Kevin Hamlin, Earnhardt's crew chief. All they can do is watch the monitor and watch their car go by the front stretch. Earnhardt just loosened up Jeff Gordon there. Yes, he did. He went in there and moved the car around in the slipstream behind him there. You can see Gordon really fighting the car, getting down into turn three. Down the short shoot. Start finish line. Now there are four. It's down to four people. Michael Waltrip has dropped off the pace a little bit. And it's down to two laps to decide the Daytona 500. Mike, they have just radioed to Jeff. Protect the bottom is the word from Ray Evernham. He keeps telling them who's behind him. The three, the 2831. Protect the bottom. Irwin to the bottom. Skinner with it. Earnhardt holds the bottom. Seven Daytona 500s have been decided by a last lap pass. Will this be the eighth? Earnhardt. Right on his back bumper as they come off turn four. They, he started to put a move on him. White flag. Two and a half miles to history. Jeff Gordon trying to win his second. Dale Earnhardt trying to win his second. Buddy, where will Earnhardt make the move? Boy, I don't know. Gordon looks awful strong as they come off turn two over there down the back straightaway. Kenny Irwin looks to the outside. Right here is where he has to make, make the move. And he wasn't able to get that run up under Jeff Gordon like he wanted to. But that's what we said Friday. He was this far behind in the International Race of Champions. He, he looks inside. He goes outside. He looks inside again. Okay, right now he's got to pull right down on that back bumper and try to get him loose coming off turn four. He does not have the muscle at this point. He may have some momentum. Here comes Earnhardt. He's all the way to the bottom. Almost in the grass. He slides up the racetrack, and Jeff Gordon will win it for the second time. Wow. What a race. Oh, he gave him a little shot after there. <laughs> now, that was a love tap. <laughs> it is Valentine's Day, isn't it? Yes, it is. Ralph Shaheen. Congratulations, Ray Evernham. You did it again. You told him to protect the bottom. That's exactly did what he did. Is that where you were afraid he was going to come? Yeah, well, Dale's pretty strong up off the bottom. And, uh, you know, Jeff did a great job driving the car. Car wasn't the quickest car all day, but he did a great job driving it. I want to thank God first for giving us the opportunity to do this. And uh, DuPont and Quaker State Pepsi, everybody that, that uh, supports us. And I want to say hey to Rick again. I'm sorry he couldn't be here, but uh, God, what a great day. This team has been so awesome. Is this the beginning of a dynasty-type march to another championship? Uh, I don't know about that, Ralph. We're just uh, we're going to take it one race at a time and, and have a good time. It's just, uh, man, what an awesome feeling to win the Daytona 500. You know you got to give up that race car now. Ah, uh, we'll build another one. <laughs> Ray Evernham has done it again. He's won the Daytona 500 as a crew chief. And for the fifth time, this man, Dale Earnhardt, finishes second in the Great American Race. You saw that big crowd shot. One of those fans has won a million dollars. Jeff Gordon gets the million dollar no bull bonus. And so does the lucky fan who was paired with him. Case Gordon was the driver who went to victory lane. They will repeat that promotion four more times this season. He just hung around in there all day. And and when the time came, he's done that so many times. Ned, he didn't lead a lot. He led six laps in the first 20, <laughs> and then came back to lead the last 11 laps. They made it work for him. Oh. He's just giving a little smoke job coming down through there. Rear wheel spinning smoke flying out the back of Jeff Gordon's car. Second victory in three years for the Pittsburgh, Indiana driver who started at age five, winning races in quarter midgets, moved up to midgets. At age 14, he was driving a 1,000 horsepower sprint car and winning with it. He went to ask for his first sponsorship. The Valvoline executive said, how'd you get here today? He said, my mom drove me. <laughs> that was good experience for the man that Forbes magazine this fall called the biggest one-man marketing machine in sports. 
Dick Bergeron. Well, Dale Earnhardt, surrounded by media, let's just jump in and hear what he has to say. Dale? Earlier on, you had some problems earlier on, and then the car came well, we had a, We had an ignition problem earlier on, and uh, the car just wasn't running up to par, just wouldn't get up to speed, and we finally switched boxes, and the car, uh, the car ran a lot better. But uh, it came up in the draft there at the end, and uh, we were just trying to work. I was wanting to get with Skinner, try to work with him, but I couldn't, and he couldn't get with me. And, we just was trying, was trying to do all I could do, just get to get to the 24, and his car was pretty strong off the corners, and if I could have just got to him off the corner, I might have got, got under him, but I just couldn't get there. Came close, though. What happened at the very tail end? Those last couple laps when you were trying so hard, Dale? Got beat. Got beat. Dale Earnhardt, fifth, second for the fifth time. To Ken Squire. He is still in the car. Brooke is right here. She walked by me and said, what a race. Indeed, $2 million richer. <laughs> Jeff Gordon, as he pulls it off, fending off the old warrior, Earnhardt. Those last four or five laps as Earnhardt tried to turn him just a little, will use up those rear tires. He's just about ready to clamber out of car number 24 after a brilliant victory in one of the the greatest Daytona 500s of all time. Here is the champion of the 1999 Daytona 500, Jeff Gordon, having just a moment to get his shoe straightened out. And here he is. Jeff, those last 10 laps, what a race. That is a dream come true for me, to race Dale Earnhardt down to the final uh, finish, uh, all the way down the line for the Daytona 500. It does not get any better than that. And uh, I, I'm the last person, I think, of this racetrack today that thought we were going to win a race. Uh, I certainly uh, didn't have many friends out there, but I had one strong race car. And I tell you what, I'm glad Ray Evernham and all these Rainbow Warriors took four tires there at the end because the car was handling great. And, Man, I want to thank Dale for a great race. Uh, I mean, he did everything he possibly could, and uh, I've learned, he's probably going to tell you, I learned too much from him because he, he's taught me a lot of things over the last couple of years, and that's the only way I kept him behind me. Take us through the last moments of the race coming down out of turn four. Well, you know, I, I saw him dropping back trying to get some momentum on me, and, and I got out there too far in the middle of three and four, and I, I had to back off, to tell you the truth, because I knew he was going to get me at the line if I didn't. And uh, I may have backed off a little too much. He got up on my bumper and almost got underneath me. I got a little sideways, uh, but I knew I was going to make it to the finish right from that point on. And I tell you, I had, had a mirror full today, and I want to thank DuPont Automotive Finishes, uh, Quaker State, Pepsi, Chevrolet. This is an awesome Monte Carlo today, and those Goodyear tires are awesome, too. Thank you for everything you guys do for us. Dale, he really tried to work you over in those final moments. Well, thank God that, uh, you know, you're racing with a guy like that, and thank God for this this team and, and this awesome race car. I, I just am so blessed and so fortunate, but he worked me over big time, uh, <laughs> to say the least, you know, and that's the way he is. That's how hard he is and, and how, how bad he wants to win the state Daytona 500. He got a taste of it last year, and he won it again this year. Uh, I wanted to be able to be the one to keep him from doing that, and th this is a, an awesome win for us. Got to thank R.J. Reynolds and Winston. I, I can't believe how much money we just won today. <laughs> I cannot believe that. Congratulations are in order for a young champion. Two million dollars richer. Again, here's Mike Joy. Thanks, Kent. Dale Earnhardt second. And the next three guys behind them all had career best finishes in the 500. Kenny Irwin, Mike Skinner, and Michael Waltrip. We'll be back to present the Harley Earl Trophy to the winner of the Daytona 500 right after this. An absolutely spectacular day at Torrey Pines. The chase is on. The chase after Tiger Woods, the leader. And Bill Glasson just a few moments ago at the sixth. Going for this par five and two. What a shot. It led to an eagle for Glasson. Tiger led by as many as four at one time today. Now reduced to two, and just a moment ago for birdie at the sixth. Not this time. All right, Tiger with a two-shot lead over Bill Glasson and Billy Ray Brown here in the final round of the Buick Invitational. And coverage coming up shortly. Now back to Daytona.
Greg Gumbel back at Daytona International Speedway. Everybody should have a Valentine's Day like Jeff Gordon, the Daytona 500 championship, and $2 million in prize money. Ken Squire standing by in victory lane for the Harley J. Earl Daytona 500 trophy presentation. Ken. Yes, indeed. This is what it's all about. $2 million, sure, but your name goes on this and perpetuates your victory in the 41st annual Daytona 500. John Graham, the president of the Daytona Speedway, to make the presentation to Rain Everham, the crew chief to Brooke and to Jeff Gordon. Sir? Jeff, Ray, Brooke, Mary, Rick and Linda Hendrick, John and Kathy Hendrick, the Harley J. Earl Trophy, symbolic of the champion of the Daytona 500. Congratulations, and we will also inscribe your name again on the permanent Harley J. Earl Trophy for fans to see in Daytona, USA, along with your winning 24 car. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I want to say hi to Rick and Linda at home. Uh, you know, I know they're watching, and uh, I know he wanted to be here really bad today. we got John and Kathy here, but uh, thank you guys for what you do. And uh, i tell you what, God is just blessing all of Hendrick Motorsports. And uh, I can't say enough for all of our sponsors, DuPont Automotive Finishes, Quaker State, Chevrolet, GMAC, Kellogg's, uh, you know, everybody that makes this happen, Pepsi, uh, it, it's just a treat to be able to get behind the wheel of that race car. And this guy right here, Ray Everham Repairs, and it was a great race car today, and those Rainbow Warriors kept us in it all day. It's a, it's a great feeling. I can't believe it. Ray Everham, Brooke, and Jeff Gordon here to receive the Harley J. Earl Award. Let's go back to Greg Gumbel. Ken Squire, thank you. Jeff Gordon, victorious here in the 41st running of the Daytona 500. We'll have final results for you when we come back to Daytona International Speedway in just a moment. The duel between Jeff Gordon and Dale Earnhardt was won by Gordon. You see the Gordon crew reacting along pit road. Their man, the winner of the Daytona 500, $2 million, and Jeff Gordon exiting the car here in Victory Lane just moments ago to accept congratulations from his wife and his crew. Let's go to Ralph Shaheen. Well, Greg, it was a career best finish for Kenny Irwin, a third, a tremendous run today, Kenny, but I have to ask you, what took place with you and Dale Jarrett? Was there contact? You know, I, I don't think so. Uh, he was three wide in the center, and uh, getting into three, I just tried to back off a little, and I don't know if I actually hit him or if the air got off his, uh, his rear spoiler, but, uh, you know, it was a terrible thing that happened, and um, at the end of the race, you know, we were there. We put ourselves in a position to maybe win the race, and uh, we come up third, which is um, it's, it's not bad for me. Dick Bergeron. And I'm with Mike Skidder, who had a great run this afternoon to finish fourth. You were three wide, it seemed, all afternoon. What's it like to be in one of those deals? <laughs> it's pretty crazy, Dick, I'll tell you. You know, our low Chevy was awful strong today. You know, the, the pit crew did great. They did excellent pit stops all day. And the engine was awesome. Adam Meyer and all the guys, Todd Bear, everybody back at the shop to put the body on that car. Man, that thing would go through the air. It was really a awesome deal. The car ran good. The pit stops was good. We did everything but win the race. We just come up a little bit short, Dick. Was your heart pumping like ours was pumping those last few rate, few laps of the race? My fist was pumping and my heart was pumping and uh, I was trying not to run my mouth on the radio. And um, yeah, I was a little bit excited there, but uh, you know, uh, it, it's the tail end of the line is not the place you can pass from, you know, unless they all get sideways up there. And I was kind of hoping that they'd all kind of get two or three wide and we was going to try our famous outside move that usually works for Bobby Labonte and he taught me well, but it didn't work today. Good run. He'll win some this year for sure. To Greg. Hearts are pumping all over Daytona this afternoon. Skinner and Gordon battling just prior to the finish of the race won by Jeff Gordon. We remind you, coming up next here on CBS, final round coverage of the Buick Invitational. We'll come back to Daytona with more right after this. Gordon is way behind. Stick a fork in Jeff. He's done. What is he thinking? Holy balloon! Ooh, that's got to hurt. What could possess a man to drive like that? Oh, <sighs> Gotcha. He's making his move backward. Gordon wins. We got to get him a cup holder. Pepsi is the proud sponsor of the Daytona International Speedway and the Daytona 500. Marty's here. Let's see if fuel injected for a Ford Pro. 
A starter for a sob. EGR valve for a 74 gremlin. See you tomorrow, Marty. Pep boys. Cars like us. People love us. NASCAR driver Jeff Burton goes head-to-head -head with everyday driver Eileen. My car has a 750-horsepower high-compression engine. My car has an engine. I can cruise all afternoon at 180 miles per hour. I'll stick to 55, thanks. I start my engine with a powerful XI NASCAR Select battery. Me too. Thanks! The XI NASCAR Select battery. It's not just for race cars. In racing, the engine is everything. What? It's the driver. A driver will never see a finish line without a great engine. The greatest engine will never see a victory lap without a great driver. At least they agree on Haviland Formula 3 motor oil. The same oil you can buy right off the shelf. The engine's the first thing on the finish line. Not in Indy cars. Dial 1010-345 for long distance. Calls are always 10 cents a minute, and every call is a chance to win one of 345 fabulous daily prizes. 30,000 prizes have already been won. Save and win. Dial 1010-345 plus one in the number today. Rough. Experience the sounds of NASCAR rocks. This summer, join CBS as NASCAR hits the road with concerts featuring today's hottest performers. Feel the rush of NASCAR rocks. CBS Sports presentation of the Daytona 500 is sponsored by 1010-345. Haviland Formula 3 motor oil. Add more life to your car. And by Exide NASCAR Select, the official automotive battery of NASCAR. Welcome back to Daytona as Jeff Gordon and his crew continue to celebrate here in Victory Lane. Let's go back to the gentleman who just called a great race this afternoon, Mike Joy. And that's Jared Buddy Baker. Mike. Thanks, Greg. Ford's led 132 of the 200 laps, but Chevrolet's finished in five of the top six positions. 11 laps to go. Let's show you Jeff Gordon's final pass for the lead. He went down under the yellow line there. Passing Rusty Wallace, trying to get by Mike Skinner in the 31 on the outside there. Dale Earnhardt in the three just behind him. Ned, it looked like Earnhardt helped push Gordon into the lead. Well, he had no choice. If he was going to get to the front, he needed to help the car in front of him to get on out there. And you're right. Here they go back three wide going into turn three. We'll see Earnhardt come up there in a moment and get right on the back bumper off Jeff Gordon. Here he comes into the picture now. And... He will help get Jeff Gordon get into the lead. But if he was going to get to the front, that's what he had to do. But not knowing that he's pushing the man to the front that was going to stay there. Rusty Wallace jostling there with Mike Skinner and ended up eighth in the final tally. Skinner to fourth. Jeff Gordon, a winner for the second time. Dale Earnhardt, Kenny Irwin, career best. Mike Skinner, Michael Waltrip, finishing up in fifth. Kenny Strader, Kyle Petty, Rusty Wallace eighth. Chad Little, Rick Mast, tenth. Eleventh, Jerry Nadeau, a career best. Dollenbach, LePage, Irvin, and Musgrave, all on the lead lap. One lap down, Dave Marcus, Benson, Cope, Presley, and Mayfield. Darrell Waltrip, Brett Bodine, Mike Wallace, Ward Burton, and Bobby Labonte with damaged cars. Ricky Craven, Bill Elliott, Tony Stewart, the outside pole sitter, Bobby Hamilton, who crashed. Then Ricky Rudd, Mark Martin, Sterling Marlin, Rich Bickle, Steve Park, and Jeff Burton were running at the finish. The rest of these cars were in the garage area. Certainly have some big crashes here this afternoon that took out some, some good contenders. But uh, Jeff Gordon now goes away from here with the points lead. And Dale Earnhardt, he says it, this is his best year to pick up that eighth championship. He's second. The Winston Cup points mirror today's race results. And for the Winston Cup drivers, it's on to Rockingham, North Carolina next week. Jeff Gordon, for the second time in two years, champion of the Daytona 500. Mike, thank you. And that wraps us from here. For Ken Squire, Mike Joy, Buddy Baker, Ned Jarrett, Dick Pergren, Ralph Shaheen, and Bill Stevens, I'm Greg Gumbel. So long from Daytona International Speedway, where Jeff Gordon has won the 1999 Daytona 500. Join us next Saturday for men's NCAA basketball action. Some of you will see Kentucky taking on Arkansas. Others will see Miami matching up against UConn. Coming up next, we have final round coverage of the Buick Invitational.
happy Valentine's Day, everyone. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports, home of the Daytona 500.